On behalf of Superintendent Dr. Jim Rollins, Athletics Director staff, the students, and the alumni of Springdale High School. It is our pleasure to welcome you to this presentation of the Bulldogs Sports Network. Hi again, everybody. Zach Arns, the voice of the Bulldogs, joining you from Van Buren, Arkansas. Apologize for the delay getting on the air, but uh, we owe that to a wreck on I-40 at the Van Buren exit, which tied things up for about 40 minutes. But uh, we are here. The Bulldogs are here. The cheer team just got here, so looks like we have a, uh, a full house for tonight's very important 7A West matchup between the Van Buren Pointers and the Springdale Bulldogs. I want to bring in my uh, partner in crime here, Carlos Trevino. Carlos, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, about tonight's ball game. This is um, this is a big one. I mean, there's there's no other way to put it. Winner's going to get a home playoff game, and uh, and there's nothing more important to this group of seniors than getting that home playoff game. Absolutely, this group of seniors were, I believe, eighth graders when the Springdale program went 0 and 10, and then from there just continuously have won ball games, two wins, four wins, six wins. And this year, we're going for our um, seventh win, which will be a, a record, or, or, you know, in the Zach Error uh, time frame. I can't think right now. The traffic still has me all. Yeah, you were a little, a little the flustered <laughs> with the traffic. It, it would be a, it, we're going for their seventh win, which would be the most for the Springdale Bulldogs since the split uh, back in 2006. And it's something that they had pointed to all year long. They wanted. They had set goals. This was one of them. A home playoff game was one of them. And it all comes down to tonight. Now, there is some news out of uh, Springdale. Last week, 13 starters did not play against Bentonville. 11 of those 13 are back and back with a vengeance. Uh, there are some other injury notes. Daryl Parchman is, uh, is not here tonight. He will, uh, he will be back for the playoffs. Daryl's out with a hip injury. But the good news is, for the first time in a long time, we get to say Garrett Vaughn's back. Absolutely. Two weeks uh, without him, he went down against Rogers, and then missed the Fayetteville game. Uh, sat out the Bentonville game just to make sure he could come back at 100%. He's back tonight. He looked good in warm-ups, and I'm glad to see GV one cut GV back one in. GV one cut is, uh, is a uniform. sight for sore eyes, and Brock Pounders is back. So the uh, almost the full compliment. Now, a couple weeks ago, Grant Allen went down with a uh, with a broken leg. He was leading the world in uh, in passing. Quarterback change tonight. We're going to see the old double nickel. Uh, Connor Hutchins is going to make a start tonight, and uh, if you don't know Connor, Connor is uh, he's a different breed, man. Uh, Connor is he's unique, and we'll talk more about him. And I will, of course, uh, later on regale you with the uh, with the tale with the legend of the double nickel. We have uh, video props for that because it is, a, it is a visual thing, and you'll need to. Uh, it will sort of explain to you where Connor's coming from. He is. Uh, he is something else. Connor, <laughs> I, I know his parents quite well, and uh, I've told them I don't think he's from this planet, man. He's just a totally different type of quarterback, and uh, he's fearless, and, uh, and he's going to be tested uh, tonight. But the good news for him is that he will have a full complement of weapons. Martre Simon is healthy again. Uh, Brock is back. Jaden's back. Garrett's back. The, the offensive line is healthy. And good news on the other side of the football, which has been an issue here in the last couple of weeks, the stop troops have come back. Uh, Hunter Cornelison is back. Chops is healthy. The only one that's uh, that's going to miss tonight is Juwan Boyd. He's still out with a uh, shoulder injury. It's great to have all these guys back. Stoney White's back as well. He was out last week with, I believe, a uh, concussion protocol as well, along with Hunter. Great to see both these guys back. Great to see Martre back. Great to see all these dogs back in action tonight that had to sit out last week due to injuries. We're going to uh, talk to Zach Clark coming up with our coaches show. I promise you that is not something you want to miss. This is probably the most unique coaches show that he and I have ever done. Uh, that's coming up on the other side of the break. Carlos and I will be back after that. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Springdale Bulldog pregame show here on the Bulldog Sports Network. Taking time out of his schedule, as he always does, to meet with us, head coach Zach Clark. And coach, um, we're heading towards uh, week 10, and you know, as the calendar turns to November, coaches kind of get that laser focus, and, and I'm sure you're headed that way. But I, I guess what I want to ask you is, as a Yankees fan, you want to talk about the Red Sox <laughs> winning the World Series. No, I'm, I'm a baseball fan, for, and uh, you know, hats off to them. They... I'm surprised that the Cora managed so well. It seemed like every every button he pushed was the right one, and and uh, I was I was happy to see them win. That's what you're going to get. Okay, that, all right. Yes. So let's talk about Van Buren this week. And uh, your good friend Casey Dick, the head coach down there, is uh, turned. He's got he turned Van Buren around, and they've uh, they've started to to look like a different football team. They'd won four games the previous three years. They've won a couple this year, but uh, this one takes on special significance. It certainly does, you know. And and uh, if we win. Uh, we get to host a playoff game, which is huge uh, you, for this program. hasn't hasn't been done since the split. That's uh, that's been one of our goals, and uh, we know we're going to have to play extremely well. And he, Casey's got them playing, you know, very very good. Uh, the way he's able to, he was able to turn the corner, and I mean, you can tell those guys believe they play extremely hard, and it's going to be a tough uh, tough matchup for us. You guys uh, were banged up the last couple of weeks, a lot of injuries. You got the cavalry sort of coming back. You know, maybe for for those who haven't been paying attention the last couple of weeks, who's going to have that David Price moment? Yeah, well, uh, Garrett Vaughn. I mean, we've got to get back uh, to where you know the first five or six games of the year he was uh, he was phenomenal, and um, it, we need him at 100 percent. Kind of held him out last week. Uh, he's not 100 percent quite yet early this week, but uh, I think he'll get there. And, and if we can, uh, you know, I told him, I mean, we're going to have to ride him. He's going to have to be our, our bell cow, uh, certainly like he was early in the year. And, you know, if there's some guy to hang, if there's a guy that uh, we like to hang our hat on, it's him. He's certainly one of the best in the area, and you're going to get some some of your stop troops are going to be coming back. Hunter Cornelison's going to be coming back. Jawan's going to be coming back. I mean, it's got to be a huge boost for uh, for Coach Hobbs. No question. You know, when uh, we've got both our safeties coming at, coming back, and uh, you know, middle linebackers, so so that will be uh, you know at a at a, at a good time. Uh, you know, when you I mean, those guys have started eight games. Uh, you know, Jawan and Hunter started every game last year, most of them. So. Just, you know, without that experience, it was, it was certainly tough last week, but, uh, you know, we were able to maybe build some quality depth, but having those guys back is a welcome addition. On the other side of the break, we'll talk about the Van Buren Pointers. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs pregame show on the Bulldog Sports Network. Bulldog fans, keep up with your favorite team all year long with the official app of Springdale Bulldog Athletics. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, the Springdale Athletics app will keep you up to date with all things Bulldog. Schedule, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, as well as live broadcasts are just a touch away. The official app of the Springdale Bulldogs, proudly presented by Crane Buick GMC. Download today for free in the App Store and Google Play. It's the taste of fresh picked strawberries. Or a burger cooked to perfection right off the grill. It's a friendly smile and a well-timed wave. It's knowing your neighbors. And your neighbor's neighbors. It's knowing there's nowhere else you'd rather be. Because being here is pretty great. Quality you can trust from the people you know best. Harps. Hometown fresh. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means faster care. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care at Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. When accidents happen, our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge can mean less waiting and faster care. The 30 minutes or less ER service pledge at Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. I think Springdale Schools is a great place to teach. They have cared about my salary. They have cared about my time. Administration is awesome. They want to be there for the kids. I mean, they are number one priority. The staff, teachers, everyone's very, very nice, very polite, and very welcoming. It really feels like a family. It's always good when you have a diverse population like Springdale for kids in the classroom to see people that look like them. So it gives them a role model. I always say if I had somebody like me in kindergarten that could speak both of the languages, that would be tons of help. We go out of our way 
to provide everything that we can so that their children can get a wonderful education because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Northwest Arkansas, it is, uh, it's growing. That's one of the great things. I am originally from San Antonio, and I cannot tell you, this is a wonderful place to raise your children. It's just a great place to live, to work, and, and just to have fun. Welcome back to the Springdale Bulldogs pregame show, home of the 2018 World Series champion Red Sox. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you, um, you grew up a Yankees fan, and I mean, do you just hate puppies and America? No, no. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, you know, my parents, my mom was a teacher, dad, dad coach, so I would go to my uh, next door neighbors and we'd watch Pinstripe Power every single day, however many days. We're in, you know, and, and watch, uh, it was about the 1961 Yankees. So, believe it or not, before, and in the 80s, it was, you know, some lean years. They didn't win a championship. Uh, so, I'm, I'm not just jumping on the bandwagon, sentimental reasons. But, uh, like I said, I'm a baseball fan. I can appreciate good, uh, good baseball. Uh, and, you know, you got Ben Attendee and, I mean, David Price is an SEC guy. You know, it's uh, it, it was it was fun to watch. It's fun. This conversation is not what we had a week ago when they were playing <laughs> in the ALDS. But I mean, clearly, I've met your fan. I've met your parents, and they certainly would not have allowed this sort of thing. You know what changed it for me? Because it, Cody ended up having a cup of coffee with the Astros, and uh, but now he's a he's a pro scout. Mm -hmm. So he he made it to the big leagues with the Astros, and and loves those guys in that organization. So I thought I was rooting for them. But they did away with their pro scouting mm -hmm. department their entire so that's just you know it's bad for the brand right now and uh, I'm I'm for pro scouts and Boston still has them so ended up flipping and uh, you know blood's thicker than water so you're clearly their second favorite son I'm that's right. right if you like the clearly Yankees, you're clearly their yes, second favorite son. absolutely let's talk about uh, Van Buren a little bit they're a lot different this year last year kind of a triple option team this year they've got uh, two quarterbacks that can sort of run their system they've got a young guy in uh, Phillips and the and the older guy in the in Morrow they uh, you know they certainly do and and really like the you know number seven the older guy uh, he can really run uh, they'll put both of them out at uh, at wide receiver when they're not playing quarterback uh, the younger kid has, has come. He's played really well. I mean, they, they're getting really good play from from either one of them, uh, and and they seem more athletic. Uh, they can run. Casey's done a good job of spreading it around and and getting his athletes on the field. They uh, they haven't played in a lot of big games like this. This is a pressure game. I mean, a, a winner a win from uh, from them and and us could could cause some some discombobulation among the, uh, the, the the three, four, five seeds. I mean, they, you guys have experience in that realm. You've played in big games. I, I, I would imagine you guys probably just take this as another football game. I, you know, certainly hope so. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we've got to figure out, we're kind of scrambling a little bit, uh, you know, without Grant that we've, you know, but I, I think, uh, you know, you can't just go on business as, as usual. We got to find uh, what our guys do, do best, but I think we have, and, uh, you know, that's, I mean, our guys have, have played in big games and, and have played well, so hopefully we can draw on that experience. You mentioned losing Grant. He was leading the world in passing, and you get to, you get some help back at the receiver spots. Brock will be back, and uh, I mean that's certainly a, a comfort to have uh, number two out there running around. It is, you know, he, he's our he's our big playmaker, and um, you know, just having a guy that uh, that we know we can either feed the ball or they're going to have to change their coverage. And, uh, and bracket him, put a couple guys on him, and, and that opens up somebody else. So having, uh, not having Brock certainly affected us, but uh, we're, we're anticipating, uh, and thankfully we've got him back this week. Last chance. You can jump on the bandwagon with the Red Sox <laughs> for 2019. I'm not jumping on anybody's bandwagon. I'm still a Yankees fan, but uh, just saying I appreciated uh, what the Red Sox did this year. Probably root for the bad guys in the movies. <laughs> Kickoff's coming up. You're watching the Springdale Bulldog pregame show on the Bulldog Sports Network. And we welcome you back to Van Buren and uh, for the Red Sox fans in the audience. I, uh, Coach Clark and I have had a, an ongoing discussion, and uh, he's definitely coming around to the Red Sox side of things. There you see uh, tonight's captains. Glad to see a couple of these guys back. There's uh, Garrett Vaughn on your far left. Chops in the middle. You got Christian Wise. He's captain. Uh, we are awaiting the coin toss. We're about three minutes and 45 seconds away from the start of the game. And, Carlos, let's talk about some uh, some keys of the game for you. Uh, you know, let, let's run through the top three. Uh, my top three that I have definitely penalties. Uh, we're still averaging about 11 a game um, this season so far. Uh, I believe last week actually did a really good job against Bentonville and penalty-wise. Uh, another one tonight is definitely do your job. Uh, Springo needs to make sure that they are focused 
on trying to do their job, not doing someone else's, not doing too much, but doing just enough to be able to help the team and do what you need to do. And the last one that I have, and the most important one, I think not only for the senior class, but for Springdale in general, is win. You want to win tonight, bring that home playoff game back to Jiro Williams. Captains for tonight are coming out for uh, Springdale, as you mentioned, it's Garrett Chops and Christian for Van Buren. You've got uh, Isaac Davis, and that is uh, number five, and is uh, Landry Wilkerson, number nine. That's Logan Humphreys. He's a good kid. I've had a chance to uh, meet him a few times. Uh, good, good kid. And then the, uh, the the number seven, that's the quarterback, Christian Morrow. Uh, again, for those who are uh, not familiar with the playoff seedings, uh, right now, Bentonville, Bentonville West are getting ready to kick off. That is a de facto championship game in the 7A West. Winner gets the one seed, loser gets the two. Fayetteville and Harbor are about to kick off here. We're watching that on the monitor here. Um, Fayetteville wins. They're the three seed. Get to Springdale and Van Buren, and uh, Springdale, they win, they're the four, if all of the chalk sort of holds. Uh, they lose, boy, things get kind of kind of dicey here. You get into those triangles and AAA points, and I'm not even going to try and decipher that. That uh, that can get really, really uh, dicey, um, and a lot of it's going to come down to what happens tonight. So it looks like Van Buren won the toss. They're going to defer. So Springdale's going to get the football first, and while we have a minute, uh, well, I guess it's uh, it's time to talk about why, <laughs> about the legend of the double nickel. You ready to go back there, Seth? All right. So last year, Christian, or it's Christian, uh, Connor was a, uh, a young sophomore on the football team, sort of buried on the depth chart. And uh, his brother, Lane, was the starting quarterback. And Connor truly believes that he was better than Lane, and he would tell Lane about it. So in an effort to make some money to uh, to earn money to go to camps and things, he was mowing lawns. Well, one of the lawns that he was mowing was Coach Clark. So Connor got a really good idea that he was going to make sure that Coach Clark knew who Connor Hutchins was. Seth, go ahead and pop up the picture. That is the number five. That is what Connor <laughs> mowed into Coach Clark's lawn. And now, and he didn't just put one, he put two. Corner. So that Coach Clark would have absolutely no doubt who mowed his lawn. Now, if this isn't bad enough, what happened was that's Bermuda grass. And you can see it where it's starting to turn brown. It was real hot last summer. Mm -hmm. And that burned, and the gra and the five stayed until the fall when it started to cool down. And the grass, there's, an there's another look at it. Um, the grass, when it grew back, grew back a different shade of green. So the five stayed through the fall. In the winter, when the, when the Bermuda goes dormant, the five where the grass is stayed dark. So we had this 55 in his yard all winter long. It finally disappeared in the spring when the, grass, when the lawn came back in. So as a punishment, young Connor Hutchins was forced to wear 55 last year in the JV games. And that is where the name or the legend, the double nickel came from. So double nickel is <laughs> gonna get the football first. Dropping back deep for the Bulldogs, <laughs> Mark Trey Simon and Jonathan Lopez. So I know that uh, I, I promised that I would uh, I would get that out there so that everybody was on board with that. Uh, Connor, Con now the one thing you need to know about Connor, there ain't much that bothers Connor. He has a lot of moxie, a lot of swag, and the kids love it. Now, you know, does that translate to the field? We're going to find out. But he's got a lot of help around him, and we are underway as Flores Kicks it high and short towards Martre. Ball bounces with 15, and it's loose. And I think Van Buren's got the football. So Springdale falls asleep on special teams, and Van Buren's going to come away with the football. And indeed, Van Buren did get the ball. Martre just let that bounce right there. You can't and do that. Thinking it was going to come back towards him. Instead, it took a straight bounce straight up. And Van Buren starting this game inside the Storm Orthodox Red Zone already at the 17-yard line. So not a good start for Springdale. They will uh, start the game on defense. It'll be first and 10. The quarterback is Christian Morrow. The running back is Rivas. They're not a heavy run team. They, they do like to throw it. They get Springdale to jump off sides, and not a great start for the Bulldogs here on the, uh, the opening possession, opening couple of minutes. It'll wind up being a first down and five. They'll march that off to the 12-yard line. As well, there was a sideline warning against Van Buren there. Starting along the, uh, the front for Springdale, you'll have Luis Herrera, Nathan Burkett, Keaton Patterson, the linebackers, Hunter Cornelson, Trey Tolbert, Chops, and Christian. The D-backs, 
You've got Stoney and Ricky Monafor. Check that Gabe Bukow is going to start at the safety spot. J-Lo at one corner, Brindle at the other. And now we've got more flags. I think we're going to get a false start on Van Buren there on the tight end. So <laughs> this has been a uh, been kind of a rough start for, for both teams. It's going to go back and be first and ten. Ball will be placed back at the 17-yard line, and we are hope to get the first play of the game underway. Morrow the running back, Reva, uh, Morrow the quarterback, running back is uh, Rivas, and Morrow's going to throw on first down. Under pressure, Springdale is there, can't wrap him up, and Luis is going to wrap him up back at the 23-yard line. Luis's first sack on the year, good pressure by the Bulldogs. Great job by that Springdale front seven. Luis able to get there early, chops there to kind of make him, force him to step up. I believe that was Trey Tolbert there, able to kind of help Push him back over to Luis, and Luis cleans it up for the sack. So second down, 16. Short pass in the flat. That's Phillips. He's going to be dropped back to the original line of scrimmage at the 17. Christian there to make the stop. Van Buren's going to go fast. It's what they do. They will alternate quarterbacks between Phillips and Morrow. Morrow the runner. Phillips the passer. So it's trips to the bottom of the screen. Rivas the running back. Morrow stays in at the quarterback spot. Here's the Morrow on the roll. He's firing. That ball's going to go high and wide in the Springdale defense. Stands tall and will force a fourth down here. Springdale defense comes up big there after the miscue there on the opening kickoff. Gives Van Buren the ball inside the 20 and really only, I guess, didn't gain really any yards there after the sack. Got right back to the original line of scrimmage. And Van Buren brings out the field goal unit here. So Flores is going to check in. Ball will be placed on the far hash. At, we'll call it the, we yeah, will probably put this down here, about the 24-yard line. This will be a 34-yard attempt for Flores. 59 seconds gone in the ball game. Flores approaches the football, kicks on the way, and it is good. So with 10.57 to go in the first quarter, our score, Van Buren 3, Springdale nothing. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Bulldog fans, keep up with your favorite team all year long with the official app of Springdale Bulldog Athletics. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, the Springdale Athletics app will keep you up to date with all things Bulldog. Schedule, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, as well as live broadcasts are just a touch away. The official app of the Springdale Bulldogs, proudly presented by McClarty Daniel. Download today for free in the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back to Blakemore Field in Van Buren, Arkansas. One minute, four seconds gone. Van Buren on a Chris Flores 34-yard field goal. Has taken a 3-0 lead, and we were just noticing that uh, on the Springdale kickoff team, there might have been some confusion when uh, normally they've got three guys back deep. This week, just two. It's J-Lo and Martre. Martre on the near side. Flores approaches the football again. This one, same kick, is going to come to Martre at the 16. Here's Martre Simon. Makes one guy miss. Across the 25. And he's going to get up to the 27, 28-yard line, and that's where Springdale will take over. So here he comes, the double nickel. Connor Hutchins will be the quarterback. He'll have uh, a sight for sore eyes. Garrett Vaughn will be back in the lineup. Brock Pounders, Martre, and we'll see who the third receiver is. Uh, Connor Sykes still out with a hamstring injury. The tight end will be Jaden Cornelius. And Springdale, I think, uh, has dodged an early bullet. The, the ball is placed at the 28-yard line. First down for the Dogs. They'll come out in the pistol. Three wide receivers. Looks to be Jeffrey, Jeffrey Gum at the top, I believe. Jeffrey Mann or Trevor? Trevor going. Yeah, Trevor will start on the far side. So here they come. Here comes Garrett Vaughn on first down. Welcome back, Garrett Vaughn, across the 30, 35. Garrett's going to fight his way up near the 40-yard line. And boy, we have missed Garrett Vaughn. Great job by Garrett. Be able to get to the outside, pick up about five yards right there, and just about run over Van Buren, defensive player. Well, it's going to wind up a pickup of about – as Carlos said, about five yards, and Springdale will face a second down of five, and I think the uh, the game plan here early is easy things for, for Connor to execute. Here's a wing back reverse. Here's Brock across the 40, and it's going to bring up a third down. Good job there by Brock to be able to pick up positive yards there as he was able to get past the line of scrimmage after being stopped in the backfield. So it's third down two, clock running, 10-20 to go, first quarter. 
Magic with us here at the Bulldog Sports Network and those joining us along ESPN Radio 95.3 and 1290. He's Carlos. I'm Zach. Got Seth behind us. Felipe and I bet they're up in the uh, crow's nest shooting the game for us. Appreciate them being outside where it's a lot colder than it is in here. Connor going to change the play. Play clock is at 10. Plenty of time for the Bulldogs. Connor takes the snap, gives to Garrett on the counter. Garrett, he's going to be met at the 40-yard line. No, uh, no, no gain on the play, and it's going to bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Great job there by the Van Buren defensive line. Able to get penetration there and stop Garrett right there at the line of scrimmage. And I believe here comes the punt unit for we think <laughs> Springdale. Not the Davis special this week. It they doesn't have a look new that punter. way. It looks I believe like Brock's going to drop back to punt. Seeing some new faces out on the punt unit. Uh, Grant Allen was the punter for most of the year. Did a great job. Now it's Brock. His kick, rugby style, end over end. It's going to bounce at the 30 and straight left. And Van Buren will take over. Good field position back at the 30-yard line. So I think uh, as far as uh, Connor goes, got the nerves out, got the first uh, – Got the first drive out of the way, and now you go play football. Absolutely, and this Springdale defense, as we saw, had Van Buren had great field position to begin with inside the 20-yard line. Let's see what they answer with here. Morrow, the quarterback, Rivas is the running back. First down 10, ball at the 30. Morrow will throw, Springdale shows pressure. Morrow in trouble. Now he's going to take it, throw it as high and as far as he can out of bounds. And Good pressure from the back side. That's Chops, and you know, I'd get rid of the football too if Chops is chasing me around. Absolutely. It looked like Morrow kind of tried to stop and, and find a throw and didn't realize Chops was right there on him. And yeah. Co Coach Hobbs is, uh, I mean, he, he is just stressed over this defense, but boy, he just didn't have a lot of his pieces the last couple of weeks. It looks like, you know, a full complement minus uh, Jawan. I think you'll see the Springdale defense play much better tonight. Second down, 10. Morrow in the shotgun. Here comes Rivas on the carry. Springdale strings him out. He breaks one tackle, and he's going to get up to, say, the 34-yard line. It's going to wind up being a two-yard pickup, and it'll bring up third down. Good job there by the Springdale defense. Something that Springdale has really struggled with this year has been the run game. And so far, you know, you see as they tried to stretch that outside, only a small pickup. This is the most uncomfortable thing I'm ever going to do. I just got a uh, text from Tracy Reed. She's watching us from her shower. Five wide, Christian Morrow, and here he comes, Chops. He'll flush him to his right. Morrow trying to get to the outside, throws it to the sidelines. Boy, I think they're going to say that is a – That's incomplete. Incomplete. So Springdale going to force another three and out. And this looks more like the Springdale defense that we have uh, we've come to come to know here over the first couple of weeks. Absolutely. It's great to see, to see all these guys back this week. And, you know, Chops, Keaton right there forcing Morrow out of the pocket and trying to make an errant throw. So Rivas will check in to punt. Brock's going to drop back deep. 8.29 to go first quarter. Rivas. Kind of a sidewinding kick. Brock's going to let it hit at the 32. It's going to roll out of bounds at the 26, and that was, that's where Springdale will take over. So Springdale will have good field position here starting above the 25-yard line right now. So Springdale will take over. Ball at the 26-yard line. Connor will bring him out. Across the front tonight for the Bulldogs, you'll have uh, Barney Jesus Alvarez. He'll be at left tackle. Olayu, Rafi, Fu, and Ortega. That'll be the uh, the front wall. Actually, it looks like Felipe Adaco is going to come in here at uh, right guard, so that'll kick Fu out to the uh, the right tackle. Jaden Cornelius, the tight end. Trevor Gums, one of the wide receivers. Martre and Brock, they'll go to the top of the screen. Garrett Vaughn is the running back. So first and ten Bulldogs, ball to 26. They're going to give to Garrett on the outside zone. Garrett looking for a little bit of room. He's going to fight his way across the 30-yard line. Good pick up there to the 31, we'll call it the 31 and a half. It'll bring up second down. Garrett does a great job there, really just kind of stopping his momentum, cutting back up field and picking up a good about six yards right there. It's the clock running, eight minutes to go, first quarter, 3-0 our score. Just joining us, Connor Hutchins making his first career start, the old double nickel. We'll uh, go back to that story later if you missed it. Connor, first pass of the night, looking for Brock, and he overshoots him, and it'll bring up third down. Good protection there by the offensive line. Gave Connor enough time to find who he wanted and just overshoots Brock by about a country mile. You uh, expect Connor to have some nerves here. Uh, his last game was a couple weeks ago in a JV game. So third down, four yards to go. Trevor and 
Jaden will come to the bottom. Brock and Martre go to the top. Garrett Vaughn's a running back. Connor will throw. Blitz coming. Stands in. And he fires it. And it's intercepted at the 42. We do have a flag here a flag in the backfield. I believe that's yes, going to be do. roughing the passer against Van Buren. So Springdale may catch a break here. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're, they're talking about it. So it is going to be a roughing the passer call. So Springdale's going to catch a break break that they uh, they sorely needed. It'll move the ball up to the 46-yard line. And it'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. So, Connor, two errant passes on the uh, the first two attempts of his career. And, uh, you know, you expect him to settle down here again. I mean, he's, he's played primarily JV football. But I can tell you one thing about him and, and the team this week is there's been a lot of support for him. And the players telling him, hey, just get me the football and we're going to be okay. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs, 7.39 to go first quarter. Springdale in the pistol. He'll fake. And he's looking for Jaden right down the middle, and the ball's going to go incomplete. It'll bring up second down. Connor had Jaden down the middle and just barely missed him about a few yards outside. One of Connor's strengths is his mobility. Connor can move around a little bit. That's sort of where he's been the most dangerous uh, in JV games that I've seen. Uh, you know, he gets out of the pocket well. He runs well. And uh, I'm sure that that's something that they will try and take advantage advantage of here as the uh, as the game goes on. So Springdale will shift back into the pistol. Here comes Garrett looking, up, looking for a hole on the zone. Gets to the outside. Garrett across the 50 to 45. That's going to be awfully close to a first down for the Bulldogs. I think he's going to have just enough to pick it up. And great block down here by number 80, Trevor Gum, on the outside to be able to get Garrett that first down. The biggest help that Connor can get tonight in his first career start is for everyone to help him along and, and make his life easier and let him get comfortable. And Connor's got talent, so he will uh, he will make plays. It may just take him a little bit here, and he's going to need some help from the boys up front to keep him uh, keep him upright. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Connor gives to Garrett. A little stutter move. Garrett, my goodness, Garrett make yard line told before the game by uh, Coach Brian Davis. The first question he asked me when he saw me was, what's the record for carries in a game? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I think it's probably somewhere in the 40s. He goes, take the over. <laughs> so I expect Springdale to run the ball a lot tonight. Second down one, 6.45 to go first quarter. Another shift from the Bulldogs. Garrett back into the backfield. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Connor drops the snap. And he is going to be swallowed in the back of the field, in the backfield back at the 39-yard line. It'll wind up being a couple-yard loss. It'll bring up third down. Well, Springdale here faces a third and still manageable third and about seven right here. And I guess we'll really see what Connor can do here. Is You know, he's had his first few passes, uh, misses guys through an interception that he caught a break on there with roughing the passer. So I think Connor, as the game goes on, is definitely going to be able to settle down here and make plays. So third down. We'll call it seven. Ball to 39. Line to make is the 32. Connor to throw. Good protection. Got a guy across the middle. That's Brock. And that's going to be at the 30. We'll call it the 34-yard line. I think it's going to be close enough to go. Connor's first career completion goes to Brock Pounders. I think it's going to be about a fourth and a yard and a half. I think with that completion, that's going to give Connor a little bit of uh, confidence there as the game goes forward. Chris Owen's going to check in at a tight end spot another quarterback on the field. They're going to go into that power set that they like so much in short yardage. And now we've got confusion with personnel and we're going to get a timeout. So 5.30 to go first quarter. Van Buren leads 3-0. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on Bulldog Sports Network. You can love where you live and play at an apartment community managed by Lindsay Management Company. Affordable apartments with awesome amenities, including clubhouses, fitness center, pools, tennis and basketball courts, and playgrounds at select locations. Many locations also include golf privileges, business centers, game rooms, tanning beds, whirlpools, saunas, and resort-style swimming pools. View rates, photos, and apply online at lindsaymanagement.com. So welcome back to Van Buren. 5.30 to go, first quarter. Fourth down, we're going to call it a yard and a half. The line it makes about the 32 and a half yard line. Ball resting at the 34. It looks like uh, Springdale's going to send the offense out. 
They had the heavies in just yeah, a little bit ago. Now they're going to change, yeah, change personnel a little bit. Two tight ends set. Two wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Garrett Stallone running back out of the pistol. Connor takes a snap, gives to Garrett, looking to get to the outside, trying to make a guy miss, and he's not going to get there. He's going to be run out of bounds at the 37. Springfield's going to turn the football over. Good job there by the Van Buren defense, able to keep Garrett from picking up that first down and turning the ball over. So Van Buren will take over. That good field position at, say, the 38-yard line. 5.24 to go, first quarter, 3-0 our score. Springdale's offense had a little something going there. This Springdale defense, though, has definitely stepped up. Yeah, they have. Uh, versus games here back-to-back. -back. So bunch formation to the bottom of the screen. This is Phillips. He's the runner in the group. He's got a lane, and he has popped Stony White with the shot. Ball is going to be stopped at the 46-yard line. It's going to wind up being a pickup of nine for Phillips. Stoney with the pop right before he picks up the first down, and we have a flag here, and I believe that's going to go against uh, Van Buren, I believe on head coach Casey Dick. That's their second sideline warning. If, yep, it is going to wind up being a five-yard penalty, so Springdale again catches a break. And that's the second sideline warning. Uh, good catch there on the, uh, the kickoff. So it goes against Van Buren. It'll back him up five yards. These quarterbacks for uh, Van Buren are very diametrically different. Phillips is more of the runner. He's a bigger guy. Moro the, the thrower, but they can each do the other discipline uh, well enough to, to make them dangerous. Moro will now go out at a wide receiver spot. This is Phillips. This is a power set for Van Buren. And they're going to take it and give to Rivas. And Springdale stacks him up. Luis Herrera on the stop. It's going to wind up being about a one-yard pickup, and it's going to bring up third down. Good job there by the front seven of Springdale. Stoney White comes up from the safety spot. First one there. Kind of Revis kind of breaks the arm tackle there, and uh, Herrera able to clean that up. So it's third down, five yards to go. Clock running, 4.40 to go first quarter. Springdale. This is Phillips to throw. Left-hander fires it. It's nearly picked off by Bukow. Chop said hello on the backside, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Buko had a lot of green grass there had that ball been picked off. Yeah, I like uh, I like having him back there in the secondary in, in that Jawan spot. Gabe's had a great year, a couple of interceptions. He's been very good in the uh, the tackle game. So uh, one of your better tacklers now back at the uh, at the safety spot. Brendan Rivas into punt, back deep for the Bulldogs. It's Brock Pounders, end over end kick. Brock let it bounce at the 24, picks it up at the 22, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds there, and Spring, that's where Springdale will get the football. Good job there by Brock, just really to pick it up and step out of bounds immediately. So Connor's completed a pass here and had a few things go right for the Springdale offense. Let's see what the, the Springdale team's able to do now that they've got a few drives under their belt. A couple of scores to keep an eye on. Uh, Fayetteville leads... Leads Harbor 7-0, uh, and Bittenville actually leads Bittenville West 7-0 in a 4A1 uh, conference championship. Shiloh leads Pre Ridge 14-0. Mm, all right, there you go. So that's one that I'm personally keeping up with. I got a few friends over at Shiloh that I played with in my years. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs, ball to 23. Connor and Garrett are in the backfield. Three wide receivers sent, Jaden the tight end. Connor, he'll throw. They're going to try and set up the screen. Here's Brock. He's going to be met, wind up being no gain on the play. We'll bring up second down. That Van Buren defense stayed home there on that screen and just kind of waited for Connor to throw that ball back to Brock and loses about a yard on that. Connor's been, uh, I mean, most of uh, most of what he's done at the JV level has been uh, deep, deep passes. Connor can, uh, he can sling it a little bit. And, you know, you give him a quarter to kind of settle in and you see where he is. Again, he's, he's more mobile. Than, uh, than some of the quarterbacks who played earlier in the year. And here's Connor. He'll flip it to Garrett on the outside. Garrett's looking for a little bit of room. Connor downfield throwing a block. It's going to be a two-yard pickup, and it's going to bring up third down. Something you don't always like to see, but something you also love as, as a player is your quarterback downfield blocking. <laughs> and one that I think of as a downfield blocker as a QB is actually the head coach for Van Buren versus LSU in 2007. <laughs> That's true. And by the way, this is, as far as I can tell, the first meeting of former Razorback quarterbacks as head coaches. Connor to throw, third down, good protection. Fired it down the middle, overshoots Brock, and it's going to bring up third or fourth down. Good pass there by 
Connor able to get it down the middle just a little over out of the reach of. A little overexcited there. So Springdale bring on the punt unit here with our We think it's new the punter. punt unit. <laughs> um, we, we're never quite sure. Brock back to punt, back deep for Van Buren. That is uh, number 10, David Evans. Brock's first kick on the night, a 30-yarder. Low snap, Brock picks it up. End over end knuckleball is going to hit at the 45. Take a great Springdale roll. That's still rolling. Roll out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So it wasn't, uh, wasn't pretty, but uh, we'll take it. And Van Buren will get the football. Good field position back on the 31-yard line. That kick on the night, 46 yards. I think back-to-back -back punts that... Brock has had has been right at the 31 yard line each time. So 3.07 to go in the first quarter, 3 0 our score. Van Buren will bring trips to the bottom of the screen. Morrow back in at the quarterback spot. Chop shows blitz. Here's Morrow, quick screen. Fires it out to Phillips. Makes one guy miss. He's going to get across the 35 yard line. He'll pick up about five. It'll bring up second down. Phillips does a great job of getting upfield there after that catch, fighting for a few yards. And I believe that's a pickup of about seven. We'll give him the 38-yard line. It'll bring up second down, three yards to go. Clock running, 245. Same formation, other side. More of the quarterback. We're going to take it and give it to Rivas. Finds a hole across the 40. He's going to have first down yardage into the 45-yard line. Rivas does a great job of waiting just a little bit, finds the hole that his offensive line makes, and gets upfield for the Van Buren first down. So first and 10 for the Pointers. Ball at the 44, 2.30 to go in the quarter. Springdale shows blitz. Morrow is going to take it, throw it high and long. And ball is dropped. J-Lo on the coverage will bring up second down. Ball intended for Jude Bartholomew, number three there for Van Buren. J-Lo all over that. So it'll bring up second down, 10. Springdale relying on this defense quite a bit tonight. As the offense has uh, struggled to move the football. Morrow will throw. Got a Phillips at the 49. It'll be a five-yard pickup, and it'll bring up third down. Morrow does a great job there of finding Phillips in the flat right there. Able to pick up five yards, but Hunter right there to clean that up easy. So it's third down. The line to make is the Springdale 46. Morrow, the quarterback. Springdale showing blitz. Rivas has gone all the way at the running back spot. Morrow to throw. He's got time. Fires over the middle. Ball incomplete. Gabe Bukow on the coverage. Van Buren's going to be forced to punt. This Springdale pass defense has been outstanding really all season long. You take away, you know, a couple games. The season, the Fayetteville and Bentonville game, and you know, Springdale really, I believe, only let up 130 yards passing. They, they've done per game. Yeah, they, I mean, and, and losing guys has, has certainly hurt them quite a bit. I mean, they they were very good early on when they were healthy, and you're just starting to see all those bodies start to come back. So Rivas back to punt, and over end away from Brock this time. This one's going to bounce out of bounds at the 14 yard line. That's where Springdale will take over. I think you're going to see as this game develops that this is going to be a defensive slugfest, I think, you know, one way or another. And I think, you know, as this goes along, if Van Buren feels like they, that Connor can't move the offense, they're going to get more emboldened and take more chances. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. I think for Springdale, it's the exact same thing. I think they feel good now that they got all their guys back. Absolutely. And I think you and I definitely with – Garrett being back, we're really just waiting on Garrett to break one. Yeah, <laughs> he's been he's been able to do that. He's had one of, I believe, seventy plus yards and one of fifty yards earlier this season, and so far he's been quiet since then. But we'll see what he's able to do here. So first and ten, ball at the thirteen yard line. Here comes Garrett straight ahead. Garrett big hole. Garrett cross the twenty, and he's still going, and he's going to get really close to first down yardage. Looks like they're going to give it to him. First down, Bulldogs. Garrett does a great job of not stopping his feet, and his offensive line comes in behind him, pushes him forward, picks up the first down for Springdale, and Springdale getting those chains moving. And I think that's what you're going to start to see here. You know, as Van Buren starts to creep forward and put more guys in the box, I think you'll see Connor try and sling it to the outside and those receivers go one-on-one. -on -one. Um, 
But I think the uh, the game plan is, as Coach Davis says, you, want, you just want to know what the carries record was because it's probably going to go down tonight. Clock running, 1-10 to go first quarter, 3-0 our score. Martre in motion, they're going to give it to him. Martre trying to get to the outside, finds a hole. Martre across the 30, and he's up near the 40-yard line, first down Bulldogs. So that's a cheap way to get a passing game, you know, get some yards in the passing game. Martre on the reception. Absolutely, and great blocks by both Garrett and Jaden on the outside, really both to separate and give Martre a hole right there on the on the uh, near sideline, and Martre able to pick up that first down for Springdale. 14-yard 14, 14 pickup, clock running, 55 seconds. Coach Clark talked about it. It's, you know, things to get Connor, Connor's confidence going, get him some help. So it's first down, Martre in motion, high snap. Connor picks it up. Connor is going to make something out of nothing. He's going to wind up picking up about three yards up to the 42-yard line. So there you see what Connor can do is he can, uh, he can improvise a little bit. Absolutely, and great job by Connor. Busted play on the high snap there by, uh, I believe that was Gonzalez at center, and able to pick up, I believe that's about three yards right there. So second down, clock running, 20 seconds to go in the quarter. And this is a new look. This is the Wildcat set. They've been working on this for a couple weeks. Garrett going to take the snap. Here he comes straight ahead, Garrett Vaughn. Fights across the 45-yard line. He's going to get up to about the 46, and it's going to bring up third down when we start the second quarter. The time has run out here in the first quarter. Our score, Van Buren 3, Springdale nothing. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. If you absolutely, positively want the best heating and air company in Northwest Arkansas, then you need to call Absolute Heat and Air with over 73 years of combined experience. Their technicians are fully licensed and insured, background checked, and drug tested, so you can absolutely trust Absolute Heat and Air. They offer $49 service calls all year long, 24 7, 365. The absolute best value around. Call Absolute Heat and Air or visit us online. Back to Van Buren, Arkansas, as we start the uh, second quarter. Blake Moore Field here, nice facility here in uh, Van Buren. This is our second time down here. Uh, both, uh, uh, I guess, no, this will be our third time down here. They've been so, no. This, My our, first this, time. Uh, this is the second time down here. Last trip down here was uh, was a good trip. Springdale's going to uh, face a third down and three. They've been pretty inventive with the offense here. They've run some uh, some short little passes on on wing back or wide receivers coming across on jet motions, uh, a little wildcat. And I think Springdale's going to have to do that. They're going to have to get more creative because teams when Connor's back there, they're going to try and stack the box and make Connor beat them. Absolutely. And again, we go right back to that wildcat set, and it looks like Connor's at the top of the, your screen at the wide receiver position with Garrett in the backfield. Well, here's Garrett. They're going to run the power. Garrett across the 50, and Garrett's going to be dragged out at the 42-yard line. We've got a flag down, and I think we're going to get a hold against Springdale. I believe they're going to get Elihu for that hold. So it is called against Springdale. That will negate the first down run by Garrett Vaughn, and let's see where they mark it off from. See how uh, severe the penalty is going to be. Watching Coach Clark on the far side, he did not like that call at all. Ball's going to be placed back to the 38. Set him up with third and 11 here. Quick score update to the end of the first quarter. Fayetteville leads Harbor 7-0. And as well, Rogers and Heritage tied at 7 apiece at the end of 1. So third down and 11, ball at the 38-yard line. Line to make is the 49. Connor, good protection. He's going to throw it. He's looking for Jaden. That ball is going to be high and incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. Good ball there by Connor, able to sit back there. Throws a good ball to the opposite 40. So Brock will come in to punt. I want to thank Tracy Reed for the, uh, for the text. That was uh, much appreciated. <laughs> Back deep for. <laughs> back we deep. just hope you're not still watching from the shower. Yeah, that's always uh, that, that. That's good to know. Uh, back deep for Van Buren is number five. It's Landry Williams. Brock takes it end over end kick. It's going to hit at the 33. Take a Springdale roll. Keep rolling, and Henry's going to down it. And Cruz will knock it down at the 23 yard line, and that's where Van Buren will take over. Good punt by Brock there. Brock is uh, man, he's a heck of an athlete. Brock is uh, he's one of my favorites. I love the Brock Ness Monster. 11-26 to go for in the half. 3-0 our score. It's been a defensive battle to this point. Van Buren with 31 yards of offense. Springdale with 61. Again, the winner of this game 
That's the inside track to the four seed in the home game. I mean, this is, uh, this is a huge deal for both these teams. So first and ten, Morrow the quarterback. Chops showing blitz. Springdale showing blitz all over the place. And now it's going to be Morrow straight ahead. He's got a hole, and he's going to be brought down to the 30-yard line. He'll get seven and eight on the play, and it'll be, uh, we'll call it a uh, second and two for Van Buren. Great job there by Bukow, able to come up and hit Morrow as he was approaching first down yardage. So second down. This is Morrow again. And he's going to get the first down across the 32-yard line. Closer to the 33, and it'll be first and 10 for the pointers. Keaton Patterson, the first one there. Morrow's momentum just kind of falls forward and picks up that first down for the pointers. He's a good-sized kid, six foot 195. Good athlete. Clock running, 10.50 to go. Morrow is going to keep it again. Springdale's going to bring him down. Called the 37-yard line. It'll wind up being a three-yard pickup. It'll bring up second down seven for the Bulldogs. Or excuse me, for the Pointers. I get my dogs confused. <laughs> Great job there by Morrow. Able to run the read option to perfection there. Finds the hole in the middle as Springdale was going towards Revis and picks up about four on that play. Morrow to throw. Pass behind Phillips. Nearly intercepted. And it was going to bring up third down. And again, Gabe Bukow there on the defense for that pass almost had the interception I think that's Gabe's second almost INT so third down 10 25 to go in the half three nothing our score three receivers to the bottom of the screen Rivas is the running back Morrow the quarterback here's Morrow to throw Springdale with good pressure Morrow is flush to his right he fires he's got a man wide open can't hit him it's going to bring up fourth down Great job there by the Springdale pass defense. Christian Wise right there, Stony White. Logan Humphreys was open, just fired it behind him, and Rivas is going to have to check in and punt again. This is, uh, I think this may be more punts than we've had in the last couple of weeks. This will be the seventh punt of the game. We're 10-19 uh, to go <laughs> in the half. Do, maybe we should ask what's the record for punts in a game. Well, you have the Springdale I Bible. I do, I have the so. Bible. So here's Rivas. Ball's going to bounce and be picked up by Brock at the 17. Brock going to try and make something out of nothing. He's going to get back to the 24-yard line. That's where Springdale will take over. So Bulldogs defense holds again. Now they'll uh, trot the offense back out there. 10-09 to go in the half. 3-0 our score. It's Carlos keeping uh, an eye on all the games going on around the 7A. There's a, a championship game going on in Bentonville. I've got the game pulled up right here. That is a 7-0. Bentonville's got the football. I actually just read on Twitter that Bentonville West was actually held to zero first downs in that first quarter. Wow. That Bentonville defense is, uh, is very good, as we found out last week. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball to 24. Connor on the roll. He's got... Jaden in the flat, nice play. And I think that's kind of the, what we're looking at uh, as far as Connor goes, those quick throws, those, you know, get him on the move. It's a four-yard pickup. Jaden's first catch of the night. And he'll set up, set up a second down and manageable. Great job there by Connor, able to find Jaden immediately on that little roll out there. And it looked as if Van Buren really sold out for the run, trying to stop Garrett and able to get Jaden out into the flat. So they gave him the 30-yard line, so it'll wind up being a five-yard pickup. Second down, five yards to go. Connor gives to Garrett. Garrett across the 35-yard line. It's going to be enough for a first down up to the 36. So nice mix of plays there from the Bulldogs. Play action pass, and then Garrett back for the first down to the 36, and the Bulldogs will move the chains. Great hole there by the offensive line. Able to open up, and Garrett find it and pick up the first down. Clock stopped, 9.27 to go. Now it runs, 9.25. Another quick score update. Fayetteville and Harbor tied at seven apiece. So first down, 10 yards to go. Connor with the play fake. Firing across the middle, looking for Brock. Off his hands, incomplete, and it's going to bring up second down. And I think number one, Trent Ball, was the defender that was able to get his hands on it and just knock it out of the reach of Brock right there. So to bring up second down and 10. Connor, four out of nine, 25 yards here in the first half. Trips will come to the bottom of the screen. It's Trevor, Martre, and Brock. Cornelius stays in at the tight end. Garrett's the running back. Van Buren shows blitz off the bottom of the screen. Connor quickly 
to Martre. Martre going to be stopped at the 35-yard line. It's going to wind up being a one-yard loss. And it'll bring up third down and 11. And again, that was Trent Ball there. One of the first pointers to be all over Martre on that little swing out pass. Darius Bowers just hit uh, Connor Flanagan on a long touchdown. They have a up 14-7. Clock running, 8.40 to go. 3-11, or third and 11, there you go. Ball resting at the 35, line to make is the 46. Play clock right now at 10, and I think Coach Clark's going to let this uh, run down. He does call the timeout, so we'll take the timeout with him. 8.30 to go in the half. 3-0 our score. You, we'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Arvest is not your typical bank. See for yourself. I do most of my banking online. I really utilize it more for my online bill pay, which is absolutely great. Do you use the Arvest Go app? Yes, I do use the app. I love it. The best part is the quick view. You don't even have to log in. You can just see what your accounts are that day. But when you log in now, the, it just shows everything right there. The fingerprint touch is a game changer. We use the app. Yeah. Got to transfer money in a pinch. Quick and easy. Arvest Bank. Our customers say it best. Welcome back to Blakemore Field. It's actually Citizens Bank Stadium now. We're in the Blakemore Press Box. There you go. Uh, here at Van Buren. Okay. Third down at 11. <laughs> that go that all just went over my head. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> yeah, it was being. If, for those of you that haven't made it out of the traffic yet on your way here to uh, Van Buren, I, I do apologize. The traffic was awful getting here. In, in here, a uh, house slid off a semi and back traffic up for hours. Made me very upset. Yeah, you, you can were, ask Zach. You were very, very unhappy with this. Third down, 11 yards to go. Four-man front for Van Buren. Connor in the shotgun, and he'll throw. He's got Garrett right down the middle. He floats it for Garrett Vaughn. Garrett incomplete. Oh. oh, my goodness. He had Garrett at the 39-yard line, and Springdale's going to have to punt. That was a good ball. Just couldn't come down with it and bring up fourth down. Man, that would have been a heck of a connection there especially for confidence-wise for Connor. Yeah, they've run that play a couple of times this year and had success with it. That one just a little bit out of his reach. And bring up fourth down. Brock will come back in to punt. Dropping back deep, David Evans for Van Buren. Quick score update. Bittenville in the 7A West championship game, per se, leads uh, West 14-0. Van Buren was off sides on that play. That ball just hit a Van Buren pointer, and Springdale's going to get the football. That's about the third time that's happened this year where you get those low line drive kicks. Springdale catches a break. J-Lo comes away with the uh, recovery. Now the flag will be on uh, number five down here. Uh, he was off sides. I think if you're Springdale, you obviously decline the penalty and take the ball. Absolutely. It was actually illegal motion against, against Springdale. Springdale. Wow. So Van Buren catches a break. Wow. I, I, they threw it right as five jumped off sides. For the life of me, I keep calling Wilkerson number five. Um, as soon as they, they jumped, or either way, the penalty is going to back Springdale up. We'll back him up to the 30-yard uh, line, and Van Buren catches a huge break. That would have put Springdale inside Van Buren territory at about the 47, 46-yard line. So Brock will go back into punt formation again. Evans standing at the 40-yard line of Van Buren. Brock, this is this will be his uh, fourth kick tonight. He's averaging 38.3 on three kicks so far. Brock, another low line drive. This one going to bounce and roll dead at the 42 of Van Buren. So the pointers will have excellent field position. Van Buren, as we said, caught that break there on that illegal motion. On Springdale will end up with great field position at the 42. So Van Buren and Springdale really offensively haven't been able to move the ball a little bit here and there, but haven't put any sustainable drives together. And Van Buren right now with the only points off that initial kickoff fumble. Phillips has checked back in at the quarterback spot. He's more the runner than the thrower. Rivas is the running back. Phillips on the read option. He keeps. Springdale's got him hemmed in at the 44. It's going to wind up being a pickup of two. It'll bring up second down and eight. Good job there by the Springdale defense, able to swarm to the ball early as soon as Phillips. Sorry, I went blank on quarterback. I had to look at numbers there. Phillips able to get that two yards, but Springdale defense stops it soon. Clock running, 7.45 to go in the half. 
Double tight set for Van Buren. This is Phillips, and he's going to throw. Lefty throws it high and long, looking for his wide receiver down the uh, near side. Ball's incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Good coverage there by J-Lo and Gabe Bucal coming over the top to help out, but that ball overthrown. Pass intended there for uh, Darius Newton, 6'1", 184, junior. Got some big boys down here. Good-sized kids. I've talked to Casey Dick a couple times during the uh, during the fall about some of his guys. I mean, he really likes what he's got. I mean, for those who aren't familiar with Van Buren, I mean, this is a team really down until Casey got here and re-energized it. Morrow back at the quarterback spot on third down. Springdale showing pressure. He fires. Brock there. Nice Ooh. play by Brock Pounders to knock that one away. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Brock just immediately hits the ball out of Bartholomew's hand. And Van Buren forced a punt again here. Will be Van Buren's fifth punt of the first half. You just kind of get the feeling that if somebody gets up two scores, I mean this could be uh, this could be difficult for the team that falls behind. So Martre and Brock are going to go back deep. Rivas back in punt formation. He's averaging 40 yards per kick on four kicks. This is fifth effort. This one not as good. This is going to spin out of bounds. And boy, I'll tell you what, I don't know where they're going to mark this one. And we've got some extracurriculars. Let's see where they uh, mark this one out of bounds. I have not seen a spot yet. Looks as if he's going to mark it at the 35. 35. All right, so Springdale get good field position out of it. Ball, 36? I mean, came off his foot and went dead left. The closest uh, referee here yeah, on our side is kind of moving back and forth between a few different spots, so I we'll think see. The, uh, the, the official on the near side, I don't think he saw it. It looks like they're going to go with the 36. It'll be first down for the Dogs. That effort, just a 29-yard punt. So Springdale going to go five wide with the Wildcat. Garrett is the running back. Here's Garrett. He's going to throw it. He's got Martre in the flat. Martre across the 40 up to the 44-yard line. So I am almost certain that that is Garrett's first career uh, passing attempt. It will go complete to Martre Simon as I put Garrett into the log, and now it is official. <laughs> he now has he is one for one in his career. So Garrett going to go back in the quarterback spot again. Five wide receiver set. Here's Garrett. Garrett to throw it again. This looked more like a running back throwing a pass. <laughs> that one hit the hit the ground before it got to Brock. Yeah, I think it was a so. little kind of in between. Do I run it or do I throw it? And it's going to bring up third down for the Bulldogs. I will uh, be sure and mention that to GV1 cut the next time I see him that uh, – his throwing motion may need a little work. Maybe he's a little bit better at Madden than he is throwing. He is not good at Madden. He, is, he beat uh, you? Yeah, he did. So <laughs> third down, two yards to go. He was the only one. 6.48 to and Coach Wood. But that was a gift for me to him for his hospitality. Three wide receivers set. Here comes Martre. They're going to take and give to Garrett straight ahead. He's going to be awfully close to first down yardage. I think they're going to give it to him at the 47. The dogs will move the chains. So Garrett did a little bit of everything right there on that initial set of downs, picking up. I think Brian Davis said it best. He's been out for a couple weeks. He's, he's rested. <laughs> he's going to touch the ball an awful lot tonight. Garrett, 11 carries, 50 yards on the night. You just keep waiting for him to pop one. Clock running, 6.38 to go in the half. Garrett back in the pistol. Connor, the quarterback. Three wide receiver set. That's Jaden in motion. They're moving right to, or left to right. Here comes Garrett on the zone. Garrett. Makes a guy miss to the outside. Garrett stays in bounds, across the 50. He's going to get out of bounds at the 45-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight. It'll bring up second down and two. Great job there by Garrett, able to pick up those eight yards, make a guy miss here on the near sideline, and stay in bounds. So Springdale definitely moving the ball here on this drive. So hopefully Springdale can convert this into points. So second down, two yards to go. Connor in the shotgun. They're going to shift. Martre and Jaden will go to the left. Garrett back in the running back spot. Here he comes again. Garrett's got a seam. First down, Bulldogs. They're going to mark him down to the 43-yard line. That'll be enough. Dogs will move the chains yet again. Second time into Van Buren territory. Um, Tracy Reed texting me. Based on where Tracy is, she should not be texting me. I'll just say that. Tracy's having. A, she's in a good spot uh, with her husband, Gary. Uh, you should not be texting me. You guys should be out doing stuff. First and ten. Rogers is leading Heritage 14 to seven. <laughs> in other news, four wide receivers set. Clock running. 6:02 <laughs> to go. 
I'm so glad half. they don't have a camera here on Man, us. Yeah, it, it, we've talked to Seth about a GoPro and just told him that was a terrible idea. Here's Garrett trying to get to the outside. Garrett across the 40, and they're going to mark him down right at the 40, and it's going to bring up second down. It'll wind up being a three-yard pickup, and the dogs moving the football methodically, chewing up some time. You get the feeling that you know first one to maybe 20 is probably going to win this football game. I think with the way this game's going, with it being back and forth and the amount of punch we've seen tonight, I think really the first one to 14 may be the way that, that this goes. Five and a half minutes to go. Springdale moving left to right for those uh, listening in on ESPN Radio 95-3, a.m. For those along the uh, Bulldog Sports Network, you're going to see Martre here on the jet sweep. Martre with a seam. Martre to the 35. Martre still going, now carried by Garrett. Boy. I'll tell you what, that's a great play there by Garrett, but when somebody gets a still shot of that and puts up the meme, that's going to be weird. <laughs> Martre all the way down to the 19-yard line. Great job by Martre and, and Garrett really on that play. Garrett to, to carry Martre really the last five or six yards there to set up the Bulldogs inside the Storm Orthodontics red zone for the first time tonight, and the dogs are knocking on the door. Clock running, five minutes to go. Springdale getting their mojo going here on offense. Connor in the pistol. Garrett's behind him. Here comes Martre again. They're going to fake it to him. Here comes Garrett straight ahead. Big hole across the 15-yard line. So Springdale here opening up the playbook a little bit, going with the jet sweeps, the, the runs up the middle, and Garrett picks up another good five yards here. Kintra's low watching. Listen to Ken Trez on the way down here. Get myself in game mode. Second down six, 425 to go in the quarter. Garrett takes, gives to, or excuse me, Connor gives to Garrett. Garrett sets sail for the end zone. He's going to be knocked down at the one-yard line. The Bulldogs knocking on the door at the one. Garrett does a great job there, powering all the way down to the one. Tripped up just shy of the end zone. Would have put the Bulldogs on the board. Actually, I listened to the Kintrez's song as well on the way down here. My wife, unfortunately, um, not a fan of it, but I think that's mostly because she graduated uh, from the other side of town. <laughs> Love you, honey. So first and <laughs> first and goal. Springdale's going to call a timeout with 4.07 to go in the half. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. From setting the budget to signing the papers, we guide you through the home buying process and get you the key. Making better happen with First Security. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. You know what I just discovered is during the commercial breaks, it is literally like Black Friday when they open up the doors and everybody just pours in and starts texting me real fast. They've taken to texting during uh, commercial breaks, which is fine. I, I can do that. That's cool. 407 to go. First and goal. Ball at the one. They're Spring. texting you, not me, so that's a good one. That's true. This, this drive, nine plays, 63 yards, has been mostly on the ground. Garrett Vaughn now 16 carries, 81 yards. Springdale so going to go into the power set. Chops checks in at a tight end spot. Trayvon also. Stoney and Hunter. They'll be the up backs. Garrett Vaughn, the running back. Connor will go under center. Takes the snap. Gives to Garrett. Straight ahead. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Springdale. And Garrett just walks in the end zone from one yard out right behind Jacob Sissonfu and that big offensive line for the Springdale Bulldogs. The Bulldogs now go up. 6-3, pending the extra point. Ten plays, 64 yards, capped off by a one-yard Garrett Vaughn touchdown run, and the Dogs take the lead 6-3. Barroso in to try the extra point. Kicks on the way, and it's good. So with 4.04 to go in the half, our new score, Springdale 7, Van Duren 3. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. <laughs> taste of fresh picked strawberries or a burger cooked to perfection right off the grill it's a friendly smile and a well-timed wave it's knowing your neighbors and your neighbors neighbors it's knowing there's nowhere else you'd rather be because being here is pretty great quality you can trust from the people you know best 
Harps, hometown fresh. 4-0, 4 to go in the half, 7-3 our score. Gary Vaughn has just uh, punched it in from one yard out to give the dogs a lead. Barroso will tee it up, dropping back deep for Van Buren. Number 12 to the top of your screen, that is uh, Hayden Roark. In the middle of the screen, that is Isaac Davis, and to the bottom, that is uh, number three, Jude Bartholomew. I just want to say to Nelson, thank you for switching back to your white cleats. <laughs> yeah, we, we do appreciate it. Nelson, high kick, and now it's fumbled. That, that is a live football. And Van Buren is going to start off with terrible field position back at the 10-yard line. Man. Van Buren had the ball at the 30-yard line with the fair catch there, and it just kind of skips backwards and ends up at the 11 where Van Buren will start this drive and with the way the Springdale defense has been playing. Springdale may be looking at another score here early. So the ball will be marked at the 11. First down 10 for the pointers. 3.59 to go in the half. Morrow is the quarterback. Springdale shows blitz. Here they come. Morrow gets away from Hunter, and he's got room. Morrow across the 20-yard line, and he is still going. Christian Morrow is going to be dragged down at the 50-yard line by Jonathan Lopez. That's the biggest play of the night for the Van Buren offense. And they get themselves out of a hole and into good position here right before halftime. Great job there by Morrow, able to elude the tackle by Hunter and pick up a great chunk of yards there for the pointers. So it's first down 10, ball to 49. Clock running, 3.45 to go in the half. Morrow the quarterback. Springdale again shows blitz. Morrow keeps, and Springdale is right there. He's going to wind up losing a yard. Herrera down at the bottom of that pile. Hunter and Trey also. So it's a one-yard loss, and it'll bring up second down and 11. That front seven for Springdale said, all right, you beat us in the last play. You're not going to do it again. So second down, 11 yards to go. Morrow the quarterback, Rivas the running back. Springdale showing blitz. Newton, the wide receiver, to the bottom of the screen. Bartholomew to the top. Morrow to throw. Looking to the outside. Pass complete. That's Phillips. He's tackled there by Christian Wise at the 44, and it'll bring up a third down and five. Wise did a great job there on, on the coverage. Phillips just a little bit bigger than Wise is and able to use his power to bring in that ball. Six-yard pickup on the play. Clock running, 2.48 to go in the half. Here's Morrow with the play fake, fires, has Logan Humphreys complete at the 31-yard line. Humphreys picks up a first down there for the pointers, and Van Buren here as they started at their own 11-yard line now, almost inside the orthodontics red zone. 2.38 to go in the half, first down 10 on the 13-yard pickup. Ball resting at the 31-yard line. Rivas again, still the running back. Here he comes straight ahead. Luis Herrera's there. Hunter's there. He might have gotten, you know, they're going to get, wind up giving him two yards out of that, straight ahead to the 29. Great job there by Luis, able to shut off his block and get uh, Rivas in the backfield. And as you said, they give him about two yards there. Van Buren does have all three timeouts left. Second down and eight. 2.05 to go in the half. Morrow and Rivas in the back. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Bartholomew in a slot position. Springdale shows pressure. They've got Gary Phillips wide open in the end zone, and they're going to call Stoney for the pass interference. Phillips has gotten behind the Springdale secondary, and they're going to call Stoney for the pass interference. And as they mark this off, you have uh, I have an update here on the uh, the Fayetteville Harbor game. 21-14, Fayetteville has gone back in front. Absolutely, that's the Fayetteville Harbor game going back and forth so far tonight. As well, Rogers takes the lead over Heritage, 14-7. So the distance uh, it goes half the distance to the goal. Ball will be put, placed at the 14-yard line. So it will be first and 10. So this will be Van Buren's second time inside the Storm Orthodox red zone. Phillips, the quarterback, gives to Rivas, trying to get to the outside, makes a guy miss. Springdale's got him hemmed in at the 15. Good defense, good pursuit there by the Springdale defense. Going to bring up second down. Absolutely, and I think right now 
you're going to uh, possibly see a bend don't break defense here for the Bulldogs as I said a little bit ago second time that the pointers have been inside the red zone here tonight and the first time it only came up with three points on a uh, recovery on the kickoff. So Phillips he'll throw the lefty lets it fly pass in the end zone's caught for a touchdown and it's Christian Morrow the quarterback with the reception we got a flag down I believe that's going to go on uh, Springdale for pass interference and the touchdown's going to count. Good ball there by Phillips throwing that up tomorrow for the touchdown. So here's the call. It is pass interference and it is against Springdale. So the touchdown will stand. And Buren scores with 118 to go in the half. And just keep in mind that Van Buren gets the football to start the second half. That drive, seven plays, 89 yards, aided by a 40-yard uh, run by Christian Morrow. Flores will come in to try the extra point. Kicks on the way, and it's good. So our new score with 118 to go in the half. Van Buren 10, Springdale 7. We'll be right back to watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Welcome to McLarty Daniel Country. With six giant locations and over 3,000 vehicles, Northwest Arkansas is McLarty Daniel Country. Stop by one of our showrooms today to shop our full lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. McLarty Daniel is proud to be your premier automotive destination. Need service? We work on all makes and models six days a week. Plus, our full-service collision center can repair anything from a minor ding to a major collision. Have you visited McLarty Daniel Country? Visit us online at McLartyDaniel.com. Welcome back to Van Buren. Springdale is uh, going to get the football here with probably about a minute and 10 seconds to go. I don't know how, how uh, crazy they're going to get here. Flores is into kickoff now because of the uh, pass interference. Or is this a personal foul call? Looks like they're going to kick off from the 45-yard line. I never saw a flag on the I didn't either. extra point. The Bulldogs probably won't have a fantastic field position out of this. I imagine this is probably going to be a squib kick of some sort of Flores is just going to knock it out of the end zone. He'll approach the football. And he's just going to drive it out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback and Springdale will get the ball 20. Score updates as we wait for the Bulldogs to take the field. Uh, Bittenville leads West 14-7 as West has now gotten on the board. And in the 4A1 conference, Shiloh leads P Ridge. 28-13. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball to 20. 118 to go. Springdale has one timeout remaining. Again, I don't know how crazy they're going to get here. I imagine this might be a, a situation where they just try and pick up the first down and get to halftime. Van Buren will get the football to start the second half. Connor's going to go back in the shotgun. He's got Garrett alongside. Four wide receiver set. Trevor and Jaden to the bottom. Here comes Garrett. Looking for a little bit of room. He's going to get across the 20, maybe pick up two, and it's going to bring up second down. Springdale, I think, right here is going to really play conservatively and just kind of take it into half down three. With the way your defense has been playing outside of that last drive. Exactly. You know, really both defenses, you know, it's it's been a slugfest all night. Springdale with 138 yards of total offense. Van Buren with 121. So second down, eight. Springdale shuffled in personnel. Martray now the running back. Now they're going to shift again. Here comes Garrett back into the backfield. And we've got a flag. flag on play. False start, False start oh, called against Springdale. As I mentioned earlier, this is, as far as I can tell, the first meeting of two former Razorback quarterbacks as head coaches that, that I could find. Um, and I went back. I went back almost 40 years. So uh, Zach Clark and Casey Dick, they were about three years apart at the uh, at the university. Casey, uh, I think his final year was 2007. Zach's was uh, 2001, I believe. So second down, 13 clock running, 24 seconds to go. They're going to give to Garrett. Garrett is going to be dragged down and stood up at the 17. He's still fighting. He's going to get up near the 19-yard line. I don't see Van Buren looking to call a timeout, so that's probably going to be the last play of the game, or last play of the first half. Springdale's going to take this one 
to the locker room. They'll trail by three. And that is it as the clock hits triple zeros. Our score at halftime, Van Buren 10, Springdale 7. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, post to post. From downtown to way out of town. To connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected and energized with Ozarks Go. I need new tires. What size of tire do I need? Will they have my size? Do I need an appointment? When can I get in? How long will that take? Can I drop my car off? Do I have to wait there? What will I do with my kids? Will they have a tire that fits my budget? Does buying tires have your head spinning? At Tire Tracks, we have all the answers built on over 20 years of local service. With three convenient locations in Northwest Arkansas and over 25 highly skilled technicians, we can answer all your questions and keep your head from spinning. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means faster care. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. At Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. When accidents happen, our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge can mean less waiting and faster care. The 30 minutes or less ER service pledge at Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. We came to Arvest Bank to see what makes it different. It's a community bank that really reaches out to the customers to make them feel special. I feel special every time I come in here. They want to be involved in the community. They want to be part of the community. They support our university, our athletic department. They've told us that they would have, they could have a fleet of volunteers there to help this year if we needed. I see them at a lot of our Hispanic um, community events that we do. I can't think of another bank in the city that has such a big community presence as Arvest. Arvest Bank. Our customers say it best. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot. Because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise. To always keep it real. To always keep it Tyson. Zaxby's food has always brought people together. Catering to the big moments. The little wins. The long talks. And the quick getaways. Because food this inviting is bound to add a lot of flavor to your life. Introducing the Zax Pack. Serve with chicken fingers, sides, Texas toast, and iced tea. Pick one up for dinner or your next event. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's, indescribably good. See the largest pre-owned inventory in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in McClarty Daniel Country. With 800 pre-owned vehicles at six giant locations in Bentonville and Springdale, there's something for everyone. Plus, at McClarty Daniel, you're protected. Drive worry-free for seven years or 200,000 miles with the MD pre-owned advantage. And when it's time to sell your car, we're ready to buy it, even if you don't buy from us. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country yet? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh, delicious chicken. Will gives to Garrett on the draw. He's got a hole. Garrett inside the 20. Garrett still going inside the 10. Five touchdown Springdale. Hi, I'm Dennis Bush. And I'm Don Struven. And, and we, we want, want you, you to, to join, join the varsity, varsity club. It's a club that connects former Springdale High and Harbor High student athletes, coaches, and administrators. Plus, funds from this club may be used to support scholarships and teams. For charter memberships, you only have to pay $20 a year. But for the first five years you're out of school, members only have to pay $5. Join, Join now. now. The Varsity Club. Seconds, he still had gone. Seven, six, five, Perry to the rack. Goal! 
good. Perry off the rack, Hemphill's full court shot, no good, Harbor wins. Tyler Perry holds the ball for two minutes and then finishes off the glass. Harbor in full. Bulldog fans, keep up with your favorite team all year long with the official app of Springdale Bulldog Athletics. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, the Springdale Athletics app will keep you up to date with all things Bulldog. Schedule, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, as well as live broadcasts are just a touch away. The official app of the Springdale Bulldogs, proudly presented by McClarty Daniel. Download today for free in the App Store and Google Play. I really like to work on one class for a whole day, which I have the flexibility to do. So as we were looking at all the various programs, we looked at several different programs, but the one that we were most excited about was the School of Innovations virtual school because it seemed to have a good balance of it being well organized with a good pace, but at the same time allowing for some flexibility uh, to work with our own schedule and then also allow our kids to be interested in other things as well. Well, I'm able to help my parents and their company. So she's helping us to figure out who gets what and put them in the boxes and take them and weigh them shipping and shipping. <laughs> and So she got to see and be involved in that whole process along the way of what it looks like to try to start a business, which is really fun for her. So my parents and I, we own a company called Iachica. It's a company that inspires girls and we try to really help girls build up their inner strength. We have super cool apparel and events. Unless she's testing, she can walk away from the middle of her math lesson and come in and see what we have going on. It's really flexible and enables me to do all sorts of different things. Love where you live and play at an apartment community managed by Lindsay Management Company. Affordable apartments with awesome amenities, including clubhouses, fitness centers, pools, tennis and basketball courts, and playgrounds at select locations. Many locations also include golf privileges, business centers, game rooms, tanning beds, whirlpools, saunas, and resort-style swimming pools. View rates, photos, and apply online at lindsaymanagement.com. I think Springdale Schools is a great place to teach. They have cared about my salary. They have cared about my time. Administration is awesome. They want to be there for the kids. I mean, they are number one priority. The staff, teachers, everyone's very, very nice, very polite, and very welcoming. It really feels like a family. It's always good when you have a diverse population like Springdale for kids in the classroom to see people that look like them, so it gives them a role model. I always say if I had somebody like me in kindergarten that could speak both of the languages, that would be tons of help. We go out of our way to provide everything that we can so that their children can get a wonderful education because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Northwest Arkansas, it is, uh, it's growing. That's one of the great things. I am originally from San Antonio, and I cannot tell you, this is a wonderful place to raise your children. It's just a great place to live, to work, and, and just to have fun. If you absolutely, positively want the best heating and air company in Northwest Arkansas, then you need to call Absolute Heat and Air with over 73 years of combined experience. Their technicians are fully licensed and insured, background checked, and drug tested, so you can absolutely trust Absolute Heat and Air. They offer $49 service calls all year long, 24 7, 365. The absolute best value around. Call Absolute Heat and Air or visit us online. We started homeschooling about, well, three years ago. Right now, there's so much available in terms of homeschooling that it's a little bit overwhelming. So I started homeschooling in the fifth grade, and we were doing club soccer, so we were traveling. I first became interested in the Don Tyson School of Innovation, just what they were doing, and was fascinated by their approach. So I went and studied their website and saw that they had a virtual school. It's really flexible and enables me to do all sorts of different things. And then also being able to contact teachers if I have questions that my parents can't deal with. She really loves science and she was moving so fast that they were able to actually move her up a grade. 
Um, but then her math, she was kind of struggling with that a little bit, so we were able to try and tweak the program to fit where her needs were. I'd love to go and play college soccer. I'd love to go as high up as I can in the soccer world. Uh, but I think ultimately I'd love to work for NASA, either as an astronomer or as some kind of engineer to help colonize different planets. Arvest is not your typical bank. See for yourself. I do most of my banking online. I really utilize it more for my online bill pay, which is absolutely great. Do you use the Arvest Go app? Yes, I do use the app. I love it. The best part is the quick view. You don't even have to log in. You can just see what your accounts are that day. But when you log in now, the, it just shows everything right there. The fingerprint touch is a game changer. We use the app. Yeah. Got to transfer money in a pinch. Quick and easy. Arvest Bank. Our customers say it best. Follow Springdale Public Schools on all social media platforms. On Facebook and Twitter, you can find up-to-date information about events, school closures, and student and faculty achievements. Instagram provides weekly highlights and major news. YouTube is the home for sports live streams, district news, student productions, school board meetings, and live performances. Connect to Springdale Public Schools for pictures, videos, news, events, and more. From setting the budget to signing the papers, we guide you through the home buying process and get you the key. Making better happen with First Security. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. The Don Tyson School of Innovation Virtual Campus is a new opportunity for grades 6 through 12 to receive a Springdale School's education anytime, any place. With the blended model, virtual campus students have full access to the Don Tyson School of Innovation campus during school hours for electives, clubs, tutoring, and activities. The virtual campus is my education on my time. The Don Tyson School of Innovation Virtual Campus. Anytime, any place. the taste of fresh picked strawberries. Or a burger cooked to perfection right off the grill. It's a friendly smile and a well-timed wave. It's knowing your neighbors. And your neighbors' neighbors. It's knowing there's nowhere else you'd rather be. Because being here is pretty great. Quality you can trust from the people you know best. Harps, hometown fresh. Welcome to McLarty Daniel Country. With six giant locations and over 3,000 vehicles, Northwest Arkansas is McLarty Daniel Country. Stop by one of our showrooms today to shop our full lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. McLarty Daniel is proud to be your premier automotive destination. Need service? We work on all makes and models six days a week. Plus, our full service collision center can repair anything from a minor ding to a major collision. Have you visited McLarty Daniel Country? Visit us online at McLartyDaniel.com. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, post to post. From downtown to way out of town. To connect our customers to a world of blazing speed and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected and energized with Ozarks Go. I need new tires. What size of tire do I need? Will they have my size? Do I need an appointment? When can I get in? How long will that take? Can I drop my car off? Do I have to wait there? What will I do with my kids? Will they have a tire that fits my budget? Does buying tires have your head spinning? At Tire Tracks, we have all the answers built on over 20 years of local service. With three convenient locations in Northwest Arkansas and over 25 highly skilled technicians, we can answer all your questions and keep your head from spinning. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means faster care. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. At Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. When accidents happen, our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge can mean less waiting and faster care. 
The 30 Minutes or Less ER Service Pledge at Northwest Health System Bentonville and Springdale. We came to Arvest Bank to see what makes it different. It's a community bank that really reaches out to the customers to make them feel special. I feel special every time I come in here. They want to be involved in the community. They want to be part of the community. They support our university, our athletic department. They've told us that they would have, they could have a fleet of volunteers there to help this year if we needed. I see them at a lot of our Hispanic um, community events that we do. I can't think of another bank in the city that has such a big community presence that's Arvest. Arvest Bank. Our customers say it best. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy, but with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot, because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise, to always keep it real, to always keep it Tyson. Zaxby's food has always brought people together, catering to the big moments, the little wins, the long talks, and the quick getaways. Because food this inviting is bound to add a lot of flavor to your life. Introducing the Zax Pack. Serve with chicken fingers, sides, Texas toast, and iced tea. Pick one up for dinner or your next event. Friends, family, flavor. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Come see the largest pre-owned inventory in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in McClarty Daniel Country. With 800 pre-owned vehicles at six giant locations in Bentonville and Springdale, there's something for everyone. Plus, at McClarty Daniel, you're protected. Drive worry-free for seven years or 200,000 miles with the MD pre-owned advantage. And when it's time to sell your car, we're ready to buy it, even if you don't buy from us. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country yet? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens. Fresh, delicious chicken. Will gives to Garrett on the draw. He's got a hole. Garrett inside the 20. Garrett still going inside the 10. Five touchdown Springdale. Hi, I'm Dennis Bush. And I'm Don Struman. And, and we, we want, want you, you to, to join, join the varsity, varsity club. club. It's a club that connects former Springdale High and Harbor High student athletes, coaches, and administrators. Plus, funds from this club may be used to support scholarships and teams. For charter memberships, you only have to pay $20 a year. But for the first five years you're out of school, members only have to pay $5. Join, Join now. now. The Varsity Club. Seconds he still had gone. Seven, six, five, Perry to the rack. Good! Perry off the rack, Hempfield's full court shot, no good, Harbor wins! Tyler Perry holds the ball for two minutes and then finishes off the glass. Harbor in full. Follow Springdale Public Schools on all social media platforms. On Facebook and Twitter, you can find up-to-date information about events, school closures, and student and faculty achievements. Instagram provides weekly highlights and major news. YouTube is the home for sports live streams, district news, student productions, school board meetings, and live performances. Connect to Springdale Public Schools for pictures, videos, news, events, and more. I think Springdale Schools is a great place to teach. They have cared about my salary. They have cared about my time. Administration is awesome. They want to be there for the kids. I mean, they are number one priority. The staff, teachers, everyone's very, very nice, very polite, and very welcoming. It really feels like a family. It's always good when you have a diverse population like Springdale for kids in the classroom to see people that look like them. So it gives them a role model. I always say if I had somebody like me in kindergarten that could speak both of the languages, that would be tons of help. We go out of our way to provide everything that we can so that their children can get a wonderful education because they are the leaders of tomorrow. Northwest Arkansas, it is, uh, it's growing. 
That's one of the great things. I am originally from San Antonio, and I cannot tell you, this is a wonderful place to raise your children. It's just a great place to live, to work, and, and just to have fun. Bulldog fans, keep up with your favorite team all year long with the official app of Springdale Bulldog Athletics. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, the Springdale Athletics app will keep you up to date with all things Bulldog. Schedule, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, as well as live broadcasts are just a touch away. The official app of the Springdale Bulldogs, proudly presented by McCarty Daniel. Download today for free in the App Store and Google Play. You can love where you live and play at an apartment community managed by Lindsay Management Company. Affordable apartments with awesome amenities, including clubhouses, fitness center, pools, tennis and basketball courts, and playgrounds at select locations. Many locations also include golf privileges, business centers, game rooms, tanning beds, whirlpools, saunas, and resort-style swimming pools. View rates, photos, and apply online at lindsaymanagement.com. Northwest Arkansas, then you need to call Absolute Heat and Air with over 73 years of combined experience. Their technicians are fully licensed and insured, background checked and drug tested, so you can absolutely trust Absolute Heat and Air. They offer $49 service calls all year long, 24-7, 365, the absolute best value around. Call Absolute Heat and Air or visit us online. Arvest is not your typical bank. See for yourself. I do most of my banking online. I really utilize it more for my online bill pay, which is absolutely great. Do you use the Arvest Go app? Yes, I do use the app. I love it. The best part is the quick view. You don't even have to log in. You can just see what your accounts are that day. But when you log in now, that it just shows everything right there. The fingerprint touch is a game changer. We use the app. Yeah. Got to transfer money in a pinch. Quick and easy. Arvest Bank. Our customers say it best. From setting the budget to signing the papers, we guide you through the home buying process and get you the key. Making better happen with First Security. When homemade is too good to keep at home. Helping Arkansas business do business. Making better happen with First Security. the taste of fresh picked strawberries. Or a burger cooked to perfection right off the grill. It's a friendly smile and a well-timed wave. It's knowing your neighbors. And your neighbors' neighbors. It's knowing there's nowhere else you'd rather be. Because being here is pretty great. Quality you can trust from the people you know best. Harps, hometown fresh. Welcome to McClarty Daniel Country. With six giant locations and over 3,000 vehicles, Northwest Arkansas is McClarty Daniel Country. Stop by one of our showrooms today to shop our full lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs. McClarty Daniel is proud to be your premier automotive destination. Need service? We work on all makes and models six days a week. Plus, our full-service collision center can repair anything from a minor ding to a major collision. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com. Welcome back to Van Buren, Arkansas. Our halftime score, Springdale trails Van Buren 10 to three. Van Buren's gonna get the football to start the second half. You've got a couple updates on the conference championship game, 17-7 at halftime, is that what you said? Absolutely, uh, Bentonville with time expiring in the first half. Uh, Sam Younger kicks a 46 yard field goal, a 41 yard field goal, I apologize. So we are underway. Marius Newton's gonna fair catch the football at the 26 yard line. That is where Van Buren will take over. Their last drive ended in the end zone. So Springdale for the first half, 140 yards of total offense. Van Buren just 121. It just uh, that last drive, that uh, opening play, that 40 yard run by Christian Morrow, certainly uh, something I'm expecting to see a lot more of as that uh, quarterback run game. Absolutely, you've seen a lot of it in the first half going with that read option that they've been doing and able to pick up a good chunk of yards there towards the end of the half. Phillips, the quarterback, he's got it on the counter. He's gonna get to the outside. This is Gary Phillips. He's gonna get first down yardage across the 35 yard line. It'll be first down for the pointers. And there again, to start the second half, we see that 
QB run right out of the gate. Ball's going to be placed at the 37-yard line. It'll be a first down. Phillips now three carries, 21 yards, leading rusher in the game, Christian Morrow. He'll check back in at the quarterback spot. Six carries for 47 yards. Springfield's really done a nice job outside of just a couple of plays, uh, holding this uh, Van Buren run game pretty much in check. Here's Morrow, quarterback draw, and he is going to get to about the 45, eh, I'll call it the 44-yard line. It'll be second down. I think, uh, I think I think Coach Casey Dick has sort of settled in here. I think he uh, he feels like his defense is playing well enough that they can play conservative here and, uh, and, and work on this clock a little bit. And like, I, like I've said to you, I mean, two scores here, you get up two scores, that's going to be a huge, huge hill to climb. Springdale shows blitz, they jump off sides. I actually think they're going to get a false start against Van Buren. I hope you're right. Yeah, I think well, you're, you're better at that than I am. Well, I, actually, I went from watching the field to watching the monitor, and I saw... Uh, I believe that was either Trey or Hunter come up and kind of make a stutter step there right at the line and caused actually two Van Buren pointers to move right there on the line of scrimmage. Right, so Springdale will take the break. Ball go back to the 35-yard line. Now we've got whistles and referee from the near side coming in. And see, I, the chops jumped off sides on the top. That's what Casey Dick is arguing right now. And I think they're they're saying exactly what you did was the first was it was Trey that drew off the the, mm -hmm. the player not uh, not chopped, so second down and eleven clock running eight twenty five to go. Morrow the quarterback, Rivas the running back. You got three wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Springdale again showing blitz. Here they come off the corner. Morrow looking for Phillips. He's got nothing but room in front of him, and he's going to pick up the first down and be bumped out of bounds at the fifty. And now we get a late hit. I think Phillips was out of bounds a good yard or so when Hunter came over to try and force him out a little bit farther and draws the late hit flag. So the ball will be marked off from the 49. Springdale now in. You, know, you start to wonder, you know, if, if, if this defense can, can hold and get the football back. I mean, it's, it's become a field position game. Neither offense has been able to really move the football, but you feel like Van Buren's starting to get into a little bit of a groove here. Absolutely. The first half, we really saw more of a slugfest, and right now here to start the second half, we've seen, you know, big plays out of Van Buren and, and a 15-yard personal foul penalty that's helped them out. So first and 10, double tight end set. This is Morrow, the quarterback. The play fake, now he's going to take it and throw. He's looking for Bartholomew, and he's got the catch at the 10-yard line. He's going to walk into the end zone. J-Lo never saw the football, and Springdale's going to go down by 10. By the time J-Lo turned around, Bartholomew already had the ball in his hand, and as he tries to make the tackle, Bartholomew able to keep his feet and walk in the end zone. We talked at halftime that they sort of found, uh, they sort of found something there in the... Uh... All right. We have the uh, Springdale the coaches, coaches right next, right next, to, next to me. Yeah, they're... Uh, Wall's a little thin here. <laughs> we had uh, talked at halftime that Springdale, or that uh, Van Buren had found something on the outside there, and we thought they'd take a couple of shots, and on that particular play to Bartholomew, indeed they do. 36-yard touchdown pass, and the extra point is good, so with 10.57 to go. In the third quarter, our new score, Van Buren 17, Springdale 7. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs and the Bulldog Sports Network. Ozarks Go from Ozarks Electric Cooperative is leading the fiber revolution. Connecting the divide with high-speed broadband access to close that gap. From cloud to cloud, post to post. From downtown to way out of town. To connect our customers to a world of blazing speed, and access to absolutely everywhere. It's our customers connected and energized with Ozarks Go. 10.57 to go, third quarter. Back deep for the Bulldogs. It's J-Lo and Martre. Flores has it teed up. Seventeen seven. our new score. This is Flores. End over end kick. It's going to come to Martre at the 16. Martre Simon trying to get to the outside. He's going to fight his way up to about the 26 yard line. That's where Springdale will take over. Good 10 yard return there by Martre. So this, uh, I mean, this feels like a, a critical drive for the Bulldogs. 
not uh, not a whole lot going on offensively. 87 yards on the ground, 53 through the air, 140 total. It just feels like Springdale's got to get something out of this drive to keep this a one-score game. Connor will bring him out. Garrett Vaughn, the running back, trips to the bottom of the screen. Martre, Trevor Gum, and Brock Pounders. Here comes Garrett on the zone. Garrett's going to get north. Garrett Vaughn breaks loose. Garrett Vaughn across the 45-yard line, first down Bulldogs. Big pickup there by Garrett, able to get up through the middle of that defense. Offensive line makes up a, a hole and picks up a good chunk of yards. First down, Bulldogs. Garrett now with 106 yards on the night. He needs 25 more yards to go over 1,000 for the year. Clock running, 10.40 to go. Gum and Martre go to the bottom of the screen. Jaden's the tight end. Brock goes to the top. Connor, the quarterback. He'll hand to Garrett. No, he's going to keep it on the quarterback run. Good pick up there by Connor across the 50-yard line to the 47, and that's what he does. Absolutely, and Connor not afraid to take hits there, as you saw. Connor took a lick there by the Van Buren defense and pops right back up immediately. So second down, call it four. Clock running, 10-10 to go, third quarter. Springdale trails by 10. Connor, he'll hand to Garrett, trying to get up the field. He's going to get across the 45-yard line, first down yardage down to the 43, first down dogs. Springdale starting really picking up where they left off there in the at the end of the first half on that I guess second to last drive was their last drive into the half and moving the football again here in the ground game. One of the things that has gone unnoticed for this uh, this Van Buren football team, uh, Coach Chick, their defensive coordinator, is uh, he came from Greenwood. Uh, he, he came here of his own volition. <laughs> he was employed at Greenwood and Casey uh, hired him away and uh, he has built championship defenses. Now we've got some confusion as far as formation goes. This is Martre in motion. They're going to take it and pitch it to him, Martre. And he's going to be tackled back at the 46. It's going to wind up being a loss on the play, and Springdale's going to be behind the chains. I believe that was number 21, Dylan Dye. Let me. Four yard loss on the play. We'll bring the Bulldogs back to a second down at 14. And boy, I mean, with the way the offense just has struggled. I mean, you just can't have that kind of, uh, I mean, you can't have those negative plays on first down. Absolutely. And the way that this Van Buren defense has been playing, they've had Springdale's number all night. Connor to throw his first throw of the second half. Nice, easy throw across the middle to Martre. Makes a guy miss. Martre still going inside the 40-yard line. Very rarely do you see a guy tackle Martre, first guy. I mean, he makes one guy miss, makes two guys miss, and that's a nice, easy throw for Connor. Gets him, uh, gets him back within striking distance, picking up that uh, third down. Absolutely, and great to see Martre being able to come back after missing a little bit last week with an injury and able to set up a manageable third down here for the Bulldogs. Seven-yard pickup for Martre. He's out of bounds. Clock stopped with 8.59 to go. It's third down and seven. They show blitz. Here comes Garrett trying to get to the outside. Makes a guy miss. Garrett across the 35-yard line. Flags are down. And it was a late flag after the uh, Van Buren coaches sort of threw a fit there on the sidelines. I think they're going to get a uh, holding call on the outside receiver here. I believe it was Martre that's going to get called for the hold. And Springdale's going to get backed up again. From this angle, it didn't really look like a hold. It really just kind of looked as if Van Buren got overpowered there. But... You're on the Van Buren sideline, so the coaches scream and get the call. We're going to mark this one off from the 39. It's going to be painful. It's going to take them all the way back to the 49 and set up a third down and very long. The line to make will be the 32, so it's going to be third down, 17. They'll, uh, their longest pass of the night, just 14 yards. Connor in the shotgun. He'll throw. They're going to swing it out to Garrett on the screen. Garrett is going to be tackled. It's going to wind up being about a two-yard pickup at the 47. Springdale's going to have to punt the football. Springdale had green grass there in front of him. Van Buren able to do a great job of flying upfield and catching Garrett before he was able to pick up a good head of steam. So Brock will come in to punt. This will be his fifth punt of the night, 35.8 on the average. Back deep It's Wilkerson. Brock, end over end kick. Wilkerson retrieves it at the 14 yard line, and that's where Van Buren will take over. So the Bulldogs, you, know, you kind of feel like that four seed right now, it's, it's on the line. 
Uh, this defense has not played well here in the last two drives. Van Buren with two touchdown drives. And, uh, you know, you'd like to see this defense get back to the way they were playing in the first quarter. Absolutely. And right now Van Buren backed up inside their own 15-yard line here. And if you're Springdale, I think you kind of bring a little bit more pressure here, force Van Buren to get the ball out uh, sooner than they want. Double tight end set. Phillips, the quarterback. This is him on the option read, making guys miss. He's going to get across the 24-yard line, and that's going to be awfully close to a first down. Yep, they're going to give him the 24. That'll be enough. So one play, one first down. Phillips now running the football very effectively. That's four carries, 31 yards. Phillips still the quarterback. I think they're going to go right back to that read option. This is Phillips. He's got a hole off the left side, and he'll get up to the 35, the 40. Hunter's going to clean him up, but it's another huge gain for Gary Phillips, and, boy, they got it going here in the second, quarter, in the second half. Absolutely. Van Buren really not doing anything out of the normal there. Really just going right back to that read option play after play and able to pick up, you know, 10, 15 yards a, a play. So it's first and 10, ball to 43. Two plays have netted. Almost 30 yards of offense. Seven and a half to go, third quarter. Van Buren's got something going here and looking to put this thing away. This is Rivas trying to get to the outside. And he's going to fight across the 50 into Springdale territory down at the 49. Christian Wise had him wrapped up in the backfield. Rivas able to break that tackle and pick up about eight yards there on the play and now get the pointers inside Springdale territory. Clock running, approaching seven minutes to go. It's second down, two yards to go. Same formation, and looks like we're going to get a false start against Van Buren. Springdale jumped down to a five front there and had Chops bring inside, and I believe that was Nathan Burkett jump inside a little bit more and drew Van Buren offside. Second down and seven. That is now uh, seven penalties against Van Buren. Phillips still the quarterback. Springdale shows blitz. Here they come. Phillips will throw. He's got Morrow out in the flat. Nice tackle on the far side by Brock. It's going to get the five yards back. It's going to bring up third down. And if you're Springdale right here, this is a big third down play. I think you definitely want to try and get your offense or your defense off the field here and force Van Buren to punt you, you back the ball. 6.25 to go in the third quarter. Springdale showing blitz, and here they come. This is Phillips trying to get to the outside, and they're going to stop him. He might have gotten a half yard. It's going to bring up a fourth down, and we'll call it two. So if you're Casey Dick right here, your offense is moving the ball. Yeah, I think they're going to go for it. This is a huge play for Springdale. This is a, a momentum-type play. The line to make is the 47. The ball is resting just inside the 49, and they're going to send out at least, we think, the punt team. This is this is hard. This has hard count written all over it. Absolutely, and your punter is also your running Israel, back. So your running back, so. good point. Springdale is going to put uh, nine at the line of scrimmage and drop two back, Martre and Brock. Rivas takes a snap, and he kicks it. High spiral, Brock is going to field it at the eight, makes a guy miss. Brock still on his feet, and he's going to get stopped at the eight-yard line. But I think the bigger news for Springdale is he got the football back. Absolutely, and I think outside of the loss of uh, yards play there in that last drive and the penalty, I think Springdale had the ball moving there and had momentum behind him. So let's see if Springdale can drive the length of the field here and see if they can put points on the board and bring this back to a one-score ball game. Van Buren has seized control of the football game here in the uh, second half. 17-7, our score, 5.27 to go in the third quarter. Springdale offense is huddled up on the far side. we got a penalty. Looks like they're going to back Springdale up again. It's going to be a half the distance to the goal line penalty. Put the ball at about the four-yard line right there. Didn't quite catch what the penalty was. So it'll be first and ten for the Dogs. Garrett's the running back. You got Brock, Trevor, and Martre, the receivers. Jaden Cornelius, the tight end. Here comes Garrett. 
Trying to get to the outside, Garrett Vaughn across the five. And he'll be cut down across the 10 yard line. I think about a yard short of that first down marker. Nice play there by Garrett out to the, let's see, that'll be out to the 13 yard line. So a nine yard pickup. And again, the Garrett watch for a thousand yards is close. He is, he needed 131 coming in. He's got 121 right now on 22 carries. The clock is stopped with 519 to go. Here he comes again. No play action pass. They're going to find Garrett on the back side. Garrett busts loose and up to the 17 yard line. It's going to be enough for a Springdale first down. Garrett does a great job there, really just sitting behind his offensive line. Um, I don't want to sound a design screen pass, um, but on a non-traditional screen, really, and able to pick up a first down for Springdale. Clock running, five minutes to go. Third quarter, Springdale trails by 10. Here comes Garrett again, straight ahead, turns north. Garrett across the 30, first down Springdale. And Zach, he had needed how many yards to get there? He needed 10. Yeah, I think he may have just I picked that up. I believe that is going to put Garrett over 1,000 yards for the season. He's the first back to gain 1,000 since then. I'm going to probably mess this up. I'll double check. But I think since 2011, maybe 12. I'll, have to go, I'll check that in a second when I pull out the, uh, the Bible. First and 10 ball at the 31. Garrett now with 23 carries, 135 yards. Congratulations, Garrett, on breaking 1,000 yards this season. Here comes Garrett again. This one, not as much. Looks like he's going to get a yard on the play. We'll bring up second down and nine. So I think right here, both offensively and defensively, if you're Van Buren and Springdale, your ball game really is being won up front in the trenches. And right now, Van Buren's been the more dominant team uh, really offensively than defensively. So second and nine. Nice catch by, by Garrett. That pass behind him. Good adjustment. And it's going to bring up a third down, and we'll call it two. Good pass there from, I believe that was Will Mueller at quarterback. Third down, two. Heavies are coming in for Springdale. Ball is going to be at the 39. Line to make is the 41. Garrett straight ahead, and he is not going to get there. He's going to get to the 40, and that's about it. And I'll tell you what, they gave him a really favorable spot. It's going to be we may have six inches, inches short. They are going to call it fourth down here. Yeah, he's about a, he's probably six inches short, and I think Springdale's got to go for it. Absolutely. I think if you're Springdale, you know, you need those six inches to, to really stay in this ball game. Same formation. Clock running, three minutes to go. I mean, it's 11 guys in a phone booth. They're going to take and give to Garrett straight ahead, and he is going to flip forward, and they're going to give him the first down up to the 41. One shows to be over the other. Shows to be a little bit behind. Waiting on the call. Yeah, and he picked down, it up. So. First down for the Dogs. The drive will continue. This drive now seven plays, 33 yards. Couple quick score updates. Rogers now leads Heritage 27-7. to seven. Wow. We'll uh, talk about that in a little bit. That game takes on extra significance. Clock running, 2.45 to go, 17-7 our score. Ball's at the 41-yard line, first down and 10. Play clock at 6. Here comes Garrett on the counter, straight ahead, just trying to fight for what he can. He's going to get one of getting a yard out of that, not much more. It'll be second down and 9. Garrett doing a great job there, fighting for two yards on that play. So bring the ball up to about the... 43 yard line, 42 and a half. Second down, 210 to go in the quarter. Springdale down by 10. You know, we've been talking all game long about, you know, if you can get it to two scores, 
becomes a whole different football game. Here's Brock. Makes one guy miss. Brock still going across the 45-yard line. He's going to be dragged out of bounds. It's going to bring up third down. Brock with a great spin move at about the 40-yard line to avoid a tackle in the backfield and pick, still pick up positive yards on that play. Getting three on the play. It's up to 46. This, uh, this Springdale offense has just been a struggle all night long, but now suddenly getting a little something going here. Nine plays, 38 yards on this drive. Very methodical, taking a lot of clock here. 125 to go. Garrett in the flat, pass nowhere near him, and it goes incomplete, and it's going to bring up fourth down. I think you got to punt it here. I don't think you can uh, – your offense, is, this has been a struggle all night. But uh, I don't see, the, uh, I don't see the, the punter coming on. Well, I guess Brock is the punter, so they're not sending Henry Cruz on. That's who I usually look <laughs> for, so it looks like they're going to go for it. I think here definitely watch for the hard count. Springdale's going to throw. He's got Martray at the 48-yard line. It's going to be enough for a Springdale first down. He's still going. Martray at the 20, the 15. Martray looking for the end zone. He's going to be dragged down at the one-yard line, and they're going to say that's a, that play is good. Martray Simon doing it on his own. It's going to no pick whistles, up. No, no one whistles, no whistles, no nothing. Or anything, yeah, so I mean, there's, there's, you and I both thought he, <laughs> was, I thought down. he was down. But Martre heads up play for Martre, keeps going. I think we're definitely going to have to go back and watch that one. That's, uh, that's one for the record books. Martre to Simon bailing Springdale out, gives him the football at the one-yard line. And I think Van Buren actually had Martre stopped a yard short there. Well, it was funny. You know, he had picked up the first down. The referee started to mark the ball, and Martre took off. Here he comes. Here's Garrett again, and they are going to swarm him back at the three-yard line. It's going to wind up being a two-yard loss. I think they got a pretty good bead on that. It's going to bring up a second down. I think if you're Springdale here, you know Van Buren's gunning for 20. So I think if you're Springdale, you definitely want to try and maybe counter that and give it to one of your up backs that they're not going to expect and see if they can't bounce it outside. Second down, ball to three. That's Stoney in motion. They're going to take. They're going to throw it. They're going to find chops in the flat for the touchdown. So Springdale answers right back. Great job by Garrett on the play fake. And went right that? over. That was nice. And I was like, oh, he stopped. And next thing I know, number 15, Will Mueller has the ball still. And chops comes underneath, catches it, and walks into the end zone for the Springdale touchdown. Now we've got a conference going on here. They're going to say touchdown Springdale, and then after the play. Okay. Oh, my gosh. There's a big one. Wilkerson has been ejected for an unsportsmanlike conduct, and I'm watching Casey Dick down here on the sidelines. He is not happy. Casey is definitely animated down here as Wilkerson is having to walk off the field. And he's still talking to him. So Barroso in to try the extra point. Springdale answers right back and gets back to a 17-13 score as the extra point team comes on. Kicks on the way, and it's good. So with 26 seconds to go in the third quarter, our new score, Van Buren 17, Springdale 14. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. I need new tires. What size of tire do I need? Will they have my size? Do I need an appointment? When can I get in? How long will that take? Can I drop my car off? Do I have to wait there? What will I do with my kids? Will they have a tire that fits my budget? Does buying tires have your head spinning? At Tire Tracks, we have all the answers built on over 20 years of local service. With three convenient locations in Northwest Arkansas and over 25 highly skilled technicians, we can answer all your questions and keep your head from spinning. 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. Springdale has answered Chop Sanders with his first career touchdown reception for the Bulldogs. Uh, we checked with Seth, our video guy, and he says uh, Martre's play, uh, the long gainer, was perfectly good. He says he spun around, put his hand down, and kept going. So the play is good. Springdale's going to kick off from the 45-yard line after the unsportsmanlike penalty. 
now it, the ball goes back into the court of the Springdale defense, which has uh, not played well in the last two series. Looking to get the, the ship righted a little bit. Barroso got it teed up. He will hit it high and short. The ball's going to come down at the one-yard line. Springdale with good coverage back at the 15. Hunter's in there. It's like Sebastian Barranco as well, and Springdale fired up after that. So Van Buren backed up again inside the 15. The Springdale defense looking for a stop here, get the ball back to the offense. First and 10, ball to 15. The quarterback is going to be Morrow. Three wide receivers set, two to the bottom. Rivas is the running back. This is Morrow on the run. He's going to get a couple going straight ahead. He'll get up to about the 18-yard line. It'll bring up second down, and that's probably going to be the last play of the quarter. Three-yard pickup and bring up second and seven. Morrow did a great job there, really leaning on his offensive line right there and fighting for yards as that will bring the third quarter to an end. So after three quarters, our score, Van Buren 17, Springdale 14. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge means faster care. And because we're full service hospitals, a lot more care if you need it. Less waiting, faster care. At Northwest Health System, Bentonville and Springdale. When accidents happen, our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge can mean less waiting and faster care. The 30 minutes or less ER service pledge at Northwest Health System, Bentonville and Springdale. Welcome back to Van Buren as we start the fourth quarter, 17-14. we got a good one going here. So uh, as we enter the fourth quarter here, I think... Uh, I think Springdale's found a little something in the run game. I think they feel pretty good about that. They've got Van Buren backed up here. I mean, this you know, this falls on the defense here. Get the offensive football back and see what happens. Absolutely. I think defensively, like we said, we definitely want to force Van Buren to punt the football again and give Springdale the ball back as Springdale drove, I think, really the length of the field there on that. Wasn't it 96 yards on that, yeah, it was on that drive? Yeah, 96 yards on the, on the touchdown drive. So it's second down, seven. Phillips now the quarterback. This is a run set that they have run out of most of the night. Phillips the quarterback. He's going to keep it on the counter, and he's got a huge hole in Phillips across the 30, and now it's a foot race. Across the 50, and Phillips is going to be pushed out of bounds by Gabe Bukow at the 42-yard line. Springdale just has no, no answer for Gary Phillips right now. I think really any time we've seen Phillips in the ballgame tonight, they've had that quarterback option in play all night. And we've seen Phillips and Morrow both have big successes with those calls. So first and 10, ball's going to be placed at the 42. So Van Buren gets themselves out of trouble. And the Springdale defense now forced to stiffen up a little bit. And now we've got flags. And it's going to be a false start against Van Buren. We have a, uh, we have a very unique uh, vantage point here in Van Buren. Great facility, by the way. If you haven't been down to Van Buren, this is a, it's an older facility, but a great facility. But we sit in between the coaches. Awful there. parking. It is so, it, the, the par the parking leaves something to be desired unless you know where you're going. Which see, my first time being you didn't down know, here, you didn't I know where not. you're going. I understand, but we sit. Uh, we've got Van Buren's coaches to our left. We've got Springdale's coaches to our right. So we know exactly what's going on. First down, 15, 11:44 to go in a ball game. This is Phillips. He's going to hang it high and long, looking for Morrow, and that ball is going to sail incomplete, and it'll bring up a second down. So as that brings up second down, quick score updates around the 7A West. Uh, Rogers leads Heritage 33-7. Um, Bentonville still leading 17-7, and Fayetteville and Harbor still at 21-14. So second down, 15 yards ago, ball at the 47. Springdale trying to get a stop here, get their offensive football. Rivas caught in the backfield. Brindle's going to be there, and he's going to get to balls loose. And they're going to say he was down at the 44-yard line. So Rivas will wind up getting about three yards on the plate. It's going to bring up a third down and long. If you're Springdale, you definitely want to make sure, you know, you don't let anything pass the sticks complete. You want to make sure Van Buren 
is stopped well short of that first down. This feels like the same play they ran at the same part of the field in the first half, those those double slants to Logan Humphreys. He's six foot five. He's going to go to the top of the screen here with Phillips. This is, feels like that double slant right here, and they're going to try and hit him right at about the 35-yard line and let him fall forward for the first down. Third down and 12. Clock running, 10.50 to go. Springdale shows blitz. Morrow on the roll. Now he's going to fire it long. He's got a guy wide open. And it's knocked away. Oh, my goodness. What a phenomenal play. I believe that's Gabe Bukow Buk on the coverage. They were beaten. But Gabe recovers, makes the play. He and Stoney run traffic in front of the receiver, and Gabe stripped it away at the last minute. I mean, that had touchdown written all over it. He put a little bit more air under it. Absolutely. And Springdale catches a break there on that deflection by Gabe and forces the punt unit to come out for we Van think, Buren. We think. I mean, fourth and 12 is... is you, you would think, but again, think the so, running back is exactly. the punter, so we'll, we'll wait and see. Rivas put his foot into it. High tail dragger. Ball's going to hit at the 25. It's going to take a nice Springdale roll, and it's going to roll dead at the 36. That's going to wind up being a, an eight-yard punt. I think that was the shortest punt of the night. By far. And Brock actually came up and flirted I, with that well, ball I'll tell a little you what, bit. He was thinking I was about like, it too, wasn't I'm he? I'm sitting up here and I'm like, Brock, please do not, do not. And Van Buren picks up the ball on the bounce, not letting it roll anymore in a, in a Springdale roll. And Springdale takes over the 36. I mean, he really didn't kick it that far. I mean, it was, uh, I, you know, I don't see any wind to speak of. Doesn't show any flags around yeah. here or banners or anything like that. So first and ten for the Bulldogs. Ball at the – they're going to give them the 36. Three wide receivers set. Garrett's the running back. Play action pass. Oh, my goodness. Brock Pounders. Brocky Balboa. Brocky the Brock Nest Monster. It was not a good Brock throw. star. Whatever you <laughs> want to call him. Completely just took the ball out of the defender's hand. I mean, that ball was thrown up and like a punt. Brock <laughs> comes down with it. I mean, he went up and got it. I mean, that's I all you can say is Brock Brock saved the day. <laughs> I mean, that is uh, that's incredible. Brock Pounders with a phenomenal play. Put Springdale inside the Storm's orthodontics red zone at the 19. Dogs with a chance here to get, uh, get control of this football game. Here comes Garrett straight ahead across the 15. Garrett spin move. To the 10, set sail for the end zone. Garrett Vaughn down to the one-yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Great job by Garrett. Able to bounce it to the outside. Use the uh, referee there yeah, kind of as, uh, as a blocker and bounces it for another about five yards there as he had a little bit extra room to work in Springdale inside the one-yard line. So the heavies come in. Chops and Trayvon will check in at the uh, tight end spots. Stoney and Hunter, the up backs. Garrett will be the deep back. Garrett on the night now. 29 carries, 156 yards. Welcome back, Garrett Vaughn. Here he goes straight ahead. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Springdale. That's Garrett Vaughn's second touchdown of the night as he walks in again from one yard. The Bulldogs take the lead at 20 to 17. 10.01 to go here in the fourth quarter. Barroso on to try the extra point. They've uh, certainly found something here in the run game. Garrett now, you know, they, they, they want to know what the record for carries is. I'm going to go to the Bible, and we're going to find out. Barroso on to try the extra point. Kicks on the way, and it's good. So with 10.01 to go in the ballgame, Springdale now leads 21-17. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. We came to Arvest Bank to see what makes it different. It's a community bank that really reaches out to the customers to make them feel special. I feel special every time I come in here. They want to be involved in the community. They want to be part of the community. They support our university, our athletic department. They've told us that they would have, they could have a fleet of volunteers there to help this year if we need it. I see them at a lot of our Hispanic um, community events that we do. I can't think of another bank in the city that has such a big community presence that's Arvest. Arvest Bank, our customers say it best. Welcome back to Van Buren, Arkansas. Hope you uh, don't get motion sickness. <laughs> well, I thought they were chasing a squirrel. <laughs> Barroso in to try the, uh, or in to kick off. 21-17 our score. The dogs have come alive here. Pooch kick. It's going to be high and short taken at the 25. This is Humphreys. Springdale is going to cut him down at the 34-yard line. 
And uh, we were just looking in the record book. The record for carries in a game for a Springdale Bulldog is 39. Garrett right now at 30. That's uh, only 10 shy. I mean, you or think 10 to break it, I should say. You, you think about some of the guys who've carried the rock for uh, for the Bulldogs. That's uh, that's pretty darn impressive. So first and 10, ball to 34. And right now, his, he's tied for third. This is Phillips. Out to the 44-yard line. Jayla's going to run him out of bounds at the 50. First down for Van Buren. Phillips doing a great job there, going right back to that read option and picks up a big first down for Van Buren. So first and 10 for the pointers. Ball at the 50. Phillips will remain the quarterback. Fox stop, 9.47 to go. This is a counter. Springdale's got that hemmed in. Christian Wise makes the stop. Christian Wise read that the whole way, comes back across the grain and meets, I believe that was, that was Rivas. Rivas there in the backfield for a loss of two. So it's second down, 12 yards to go. Clock running, 9.25 to go. Quick score update. Fayetteville extends their lead to 14, 28 to 14 over Harbor. Double tight end set. This has been a running formation for Gary Phillips. Now he's going to throw it. He's got a guy down the middle. That's Humphreys. Makes a nice catch. He's going to get down to the 26 yard line. It'll be a first down. Humphreys does a great job there of hanging onto the ball. Bobbled it there at the beginning as soon as it was thrown and able to hang on to it after that hit. Longest pass play of the night for Van Buren. And now it is first and 10, ball at the 27. Phillips remains the quarterback. He'll give to Rivas. Rivas finding some room across the 20. He's going to get into the red zone. Ball be marked at the 16, and it's going to be a first down. I think just like it's been all night, really back and forth slugfest. Two heavyweights going out of here, fighting for that four seed. And Van Buren again knocking on the door here inside the Storm Orthodontics Red Zone. Well, it'll be first and ten. Clock running 8.45 to go. First down 10. Morrow returns a quarterback. Straight ahead to Rivas. Makes a move, and Rivas is going to walk into the end zone for a Van Buren touchdown. That was too easy. Rivas does a great job of following his blockers into the end zone. And Van Buren take the lead again here. You know, for a game that really struggled to find offense in the first half, it has suddenly gotten very offensive. 339 yards for Van Buren total, 337 for Springdale. And with 8.36 to go, Springdale's going to have to answer again. Absolutely, and as I said, this is the really the battle for the four seed in a home playoff game. So Flores on to try the extra point. This kick is on the way, and it's good. So our new score. With 8.36 to go in the ballgame, Van Buren 24, Springdale 21. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. During the Great Depression, nothing came easy. But with just five cents, an old truck, and a load of hay, John Tyson and his family found a way to deliver quality chicken to other hardworking people. Today, Tyson continues to find new ways to help put a chicken in every pot because people deserve farm-raised chicken of the highest quality. At Tyson, we remain committed to this simple promise, to always keep it real, to always keep it Tyson. 8.36 to go in the ballgame, three-point game. It's been, uh, you know, for a game that was kind of ugly there in the beginning, it's gotten uh, got pretty entertaining. Absolutely. It's, you know, gone back and forth defensively in the first half and here in the second half really offensively. So we'll... I think we're here the last few, uh, about less than 10 minutes here, really set for some fireworks. So Flores has it teed up. Short kick, fair catch at the 24 yard line made by Chops and Springdale's gonna take over. So, situation looks like this, 8.36 to go in the ball game. The winner's gonna get the four seed. Losers probably going to drop to the five, and that means a trip to Fort Smith next week to face the winner of the Northside Southside game. That's uh, that's kind of the situation here. Springdale's offense will check back in. 
which keeping up with that game, the Battle of Rogers Avenue, uh, Northside, I believe, was leading 17 to seven. So here we go. Garrett's the running back. You got two receivers to the top of the screen. Jaden's the tight end. Long throw, looking for Brock Pounders, and that ball's intercepted. It was not a good throw, can't make that throw, and Springdale's going to turn the football over for the first time tonight. Flag comes after the play. I'm surprised there wasn't a pass interference call there, as it looks as if the defender had Brock's arm the entire time. So what's the call? I believe that's going to be on the pointers as it came from the near side referee here. It's gotta be a post-possession foul, right? I believe so. But we've been wrong before. That's true. Uh, we're, we're wrong more often than we're right. So Van Buren's gonna send out the offense. Yeah, it's after the play, so they get called for the sideline warning again. It'll be a five yard penalty against 15. Van Buren. Is it 15? Okay. So the, the interception will stand. So if you're the Springdale defense here, this is it. You you really need to force Van Buren into a three and out and force them to turn over the ball and get your offense back on the field and get that ground game going. So the ball will be marked back to the 25-yard line. This has been an obstacle here for Van Buren here in the second half. 24-21, 8.25 to go. This is Morrow to throw, and he loses the football. And he's going to fall on it. That ball just came out of his hands. I don't think yeah, they're going to call it a fumble. Looks as if when he dropped it, put his arm up to pass it, just slipped out of his hands. I thought we might get a tuck rule deal there, but uh, they, they're going to say back to the 14-yard line. It's going to wind up being a nine-yard loss, and it'll make it second and 19. Nine yard, 11 yard. Nope, you're right, 11 yards, my bad. This is Morrow with plenty of time. Now he runs and is flush to the right. Now he's just going to take it and he's going to throw it out of bounds. Smart play there on Morrow's part. Springdale had pressure on him that whole time and had every receiver covered. And Morrow able to just scramble out of the pocket before anybody gets to him and throws it out of bounds. So it's going to bring up second down. So third down, 21 few more score updates here out of Arkansas. Uh, Bentonville extends their lead to 24-7. Fayetteville extends theirs 35-14 and Shiloh to 49-13. Really surprised by that Bentonville score. Based on you know what we saw out of those two teams, I thought Bentonville West was, uh, was primed to, to have a nice one. There's a nice catch by Humphreys, and he is going to get the first down. That is just, uh, I mean, that's just sort of the night in a, in, a, in a nutshell there. They just throw it to Humphreys. He winds up picking up the first down, and Springdale gives up a third down and 21. And on that particular play, it's gonna ball, the ball's going to go out to the 39-yard line. First down, Van Buren, a 25-yard pickup on third and 21. Humphreys does a great job there of not getting tackled short of the sticks and picks it up on the, the yards after contact. Phillips checks in at the quarterback spot. Here he comes on the quarterback, Reed. Big hole across the 50. Chops is going to tackle him, but it's going to be enough for a Van Buren first down. And Van Buren here really just kind of running the ball here, trying to kill some clock. Clock is stopped with 7.28 to go. It'll be first down 10, ball to 49. You know, Springdale can't give up a touchdown here. You give up a touchdown, you're probably not coming back in this one. 7.20 to go. Now Van Buren, like you said, starting to work on some clock here. Phillips will stay in at the quarterback spot. Rivas is the running back. And we've got a false start against Van Buren. They've done that a couple of times. Springdale shifted on the defensive line there, and I believe this is the third time that I've seen that they've drawn Van Buren players off and had them jump a little bit too early. So it'll be first down 15, 7-11 to go. Great slushies there. <laughs> so uh, first and 15, Phillips the quarterback. You figure this is probably a quarterback run. Here he, now they're going to hand to Rivas, trying to get to the outside. Brock comes up, 
forces him inside. Luis cleans him up. Christian's there. It's going to wind up being about a two-yard pickup and second down. So Springdale here is they have Van Buren behind the sticks again. Really want to keep them behind the sticks as much as possible on this series and try and get the ball back for their offense. So the ball marked at the 47. Clock is moving. 6.30 to go. Springdale with all three timeouts. But Van Buren in absolutely no hurry whatsoever. Here's Phillips on the roll. They're going to throw back. And nice play there by Nathan to get in the way. Absolutely. Nathan Burkett comes out from the defensive end position. Sees, I believe that's Humphreys, kind of float to the outside. And... Burkett goes with them and, you know, ball goes short and third down and long for the pointers. Here we go again, third down and long. Van Buren on the night, two out of ten on third downs. They did convert their last one on a third and 21. Phillips is going to stay in at the quarterback spot. This feels like it's going to be that quarterback counter. Now he's going to throw. Springdale trying to pressure him. He takes it and he throws it as high and as far as he can. There's Brock down there. And it's knocked away by the Brockosaurus. Springdale's going to get the football back. Just made that one up on the fly. The Brocket. Hey, that's a new one. Yeah, that's, his, that's actually his nickname. <laughs> that's, his dad let me know that that's actually his the nickname. Brocket. Okay. The Brocket. So fourth down, Rivas going to check in. Man, if you're Springdale here, you have... Another eight-yard punt would be helpful. Left in this ball game. I got a feeling that uh, in this next possession, Garrett's going to carry the ball on virtually every play. Rivas. Better kick this time. He's angling for the sidelines. And Springdale dropped the football. I believe that was Martre. No signal yet from the referees. Both sides have signaled. Van Buren there. says they've got it. Say Springdale football. Springdale catches a break there. Well, I'll tell you what, the punt game has been a an adventure tonight. So Springdale's gonna take over. Ball be at the 24-yard line. Well, that was Christian Wise there that was able to jump on that ball. Johnny on the spot there for uh, for Springdale. And now with 536 to go, Springdale trails by three. You know, the field goal game. It's been a little shaky this year. I'd say you probably got to be inside the red zone to have a realistic shot at it. So they'll come out, two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Jaden will be the tight end. Garrett the running back. Martre is going to take the pitch, trying to get him to the outside. Nice block by Garrett. There's Martre up to the 40-yard line. It's going to be awfully close to a first down, and they're going to say he fumbled the football, and they're going to say he was down. Martre, as soon as he hit the ground, you saw that ball come out. So and Martre's down after that. Martre, uh, as Carlos said, is down. Jen and the uh, staff are going to tend to him. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Zaxby's food has always brought people together. Catering to the big moments. The little wins. The long talks and the quick getaways. Because food this inviting is bound to add a lot of flavor to your life. Introducing the Zax Pack. Serve with chicken fingers, sides, Texas toast, and iced tea. Pick one up for dinner or your next event. Friends, family, flavor. Zach's Beast, indescribably good. Come see the largest pre-owned inventory in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in McClarty Daniel Country. With 800 pre-owned vehicles at six giant locations in Bentonville and Springdale, there's something for everyone. Plus, at McClarty Daniel, you're protected. Drive worry-free for seven years or 200,000 miles with the MD pre-owned advantage. And when it's time to sell your car, we're ready to buy it, even if you don't buy from us. Have you visited McClarty Daniel Country yet? Visit us online at McClartyDaniel.com. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. 
And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. Bartray up under his own power, walking towards the sidelines. Um, just a, a side note, Zach and, and Casey are very good friends, and it was nice to see Casey go out to check on Martre and make sure he was all right during the, while he was down on the ground. And gotten to know Casey a little bit. Good dude. Good, good dude. Two running backs set for the first time tonight. That's uh, Chase Jones and Garrett Vaughn in the backfield. Jaden and I believe that's Michael Bates are at the top of the screen. Brock to the bottom. Clock is moving with 5.14 to go. Play clock is at 7. Here comes Garrett trying to get to the outside. He's going to turn north at the 40, and he's going to get maybe a yard out of that, and it'll be second down. Van Buren does a great job of stringing that out and able to only limit Garrett to about a yard there. So it looks as if Martre has trots back onto the field here. So it's second down and nine, clock running, 4.45 to go. Let's bring up with all three of their timeouts. Play clock at 14. Garrett will be in the backfield. Brock and Martre come to the bottom. Trevor and Jaden to the top. Ringdale will throw. Fire into Garrett in the flat. He's going to get to the 44-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and it's going to bring up third down and long. It's Ringdale right here, gone with you know, run to the outside on first down and a pass out to the flats here on second. Brings up about third and six here. The line to make is the 50. Clock is moving, 4.05 to go. Again, the winner gets the four seed, the loser gets the uh, five, and we'll talk about uh, the rest of the playoff uh, scenario. There have been some huge changes tonight. Good protection. Fires to gum underneath, ball's incomplete, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Brings up a big fourth down here for, for Springdale. I think, you know, the way the game's going, you really kind of have to go for it and pick up this first down here. This is uh, this is pretty much a ball game right here. Line to make is the 50. Fourth down and six. Martre and Brock will go to the top of the screen. Jaden and Trevor Gum to the bottom. Garrett's the running back. Fourth down lineman for Van Buren. They're going to drop back in zone. Got Brock on the far side. Brock's got the first down at the 43. Great pickup there by Brock. Able to find an area that there was no defender. Just kind of sat there. Mueller able to find him out in the flats and pick up that first down. Well, it's first down for the Dogs. 3.43 to go in the ball game. Clock starts. 24-21 our score. Glad you're with us here at the Bulldog Sports Network. We're coming down to the end, as they always seem to do with the Springdale Bulldogs. There's Garrett across the 40. He's got about eight yards down to the 35. I'll give him the 36. We'll call it a seven-yard pickup. It'll be second down. Great pickup there by Garrett. And with this game, Zach, I don't think you really could ask for anything better than this coming down really to the wire here with under about three minutes to go, I believe. And we talk about that, that line to make here for the field goal. When you start thinking about it, it's got to be inside the 20. I don't think anything outside of that's a sure thing. Three wide receivers go to the bottom of the screen. Here comes Garrett again, two hands on the football. He's going to make one guy miss, and he's going to wind up getting really close to the first down. I think he's got it. We're I think mark his offensive the line yeah. helped him pick that up, and Garrett again picks up another Springdale first down. Garrett now 33 carries on the night, 168 yards. It is enough for a first down. Clock stops momentarily, 2.50 to go. For those of you listening along ESPN Radio 95.3 and 1290 AM, dogs moving from left to right. There is no wind to speak of. It is a uh, cold night, but a nice night. It's clear skies. The weather has not certainly not been an issue at all. This is uh, football weather for the uh, folks that love it. Play clock is at 15. First down and 10 for the Dogs. Ball to 33. Trips will go to the top of the screen. Garrett's the running back. Jaden Cornelius the tight end. They're going to give to Garrett again. Trying to find a hole across the 30. 
He's going to be knocked down at about the 27, 28 yard line. It's going to be about a pickup of six. Springo continues to move the football. Never realized how Garrett stands in the backfield until just it, now. It's, it's really it's, it's, it's an upright. interesting. It's he he stands almost straight up. Usually you see guys, whether it's a pass play, whether it's a run play, kind of hunched over, knees on hands on their knees, you know, ready for the play. Garrett just kind of barely hunched over, regardless of what's going on, and is able to to take off. Play fake. Ball's fired down the middle, looking for Jaden Cornelius. Nice catch of the five. Jaden into the end zone. Touchdown, Springdale. Great play action there. Able to find Jaden right down the middle for the touchdown. And Springdale will take the lead here with a minute 51 left. Jaden was hand fighting with the linebacker. He got free, winds up with the, the reception for the touchdown. And the Bulldogs take the lead at 27-24. This is a monster extra point for Barroso. This would put Springdale up by four, force Van Buren into scoring a touchdown. So Barroso on to try the extra point. Snaps good, hold is good, kick is on the way, and it's good. So with 1.51 to go in the ball game, our new score, Springdale 28, Van Buren 24. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Nothing says game day like good friends and great food. And at Slim Chickens, we know great food. From our 100% all-natural chicken dinners, fresh-made wings served with house sauces, to delicious chicken sandwiches, crisp salads, southern sides, and desserts you just can't get anywhere else. At Slim's, we have the food you love, made fresh for the people you care about. Dine in, drive through, or order online. Slim Chickens, fresh, delicious chicken. 151 to go to the ballgame. Springdale now leads by four. Jane Cornelius with a uh, touchdown reception, and the Bulldogs have the lead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can breathe yet. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, this is something. I mean, this is this game has been back and forth. It was kind of a, a slugfest early on. It's gotten very offensive here in the second half. Bulldogs now with 413 yards of total offense. Van Buren with 366. Barroso is going to pooch kick it. Fair catch caught and called for at the 27, and that's where Van Buren will take over. So they've got good field position, but they need a touchdown to win. Field goal won't do you any good here. Does not do you any good. Van Buren does have all of their timeouts left. As well as I believe Springdale does. Springdale does as well. So, Brett Hobbs and this Nightmares defense Got to dial up something pretty special here and save the day for the Bulldogs. This is Morrow to throw. Three-man rush, no pressure. Nathan is going to flush him. And now Morrow's got plenty of room to the outside. He's going to wind up picking up about eight yards up to about the 35 o'clock stop. With 1.42 to go in the ballgame. Quick score updates out of the 7A West and the 7A Central. Northside leads. Southside 23 to 7 and Fayetteville extends their lead 42 to 14. 142 to go in the ballgame. Second and three. Christian Morrow, the quarterback. He fires. Nice play there by Brock on the far side. It's going to bring up third down. Great job there by Brock to come in immediately as that ball's thrown and knock that ball away. 138 to go. Again, Van Buren with all three timeouts. It's going to be third down and three. Teams duking it out for the four seed. Winner gets the loser of the north side, uh, north side, south side game. Winner gets the or winner gets the uh, loser. Loser gets the winner. Did I say that right? I think so. All right, there you go. One thirty-eight to go. Third down, three. Morrow, the quarterback. Rivas, the running back. Three wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. The guy to watch is Logan Humphreys up at the top of the screen. The big tight end. Morrow looking, looking, looking. Now he's under pressure. Chops, giving chase. Morrow. Direct in traffic, and he's going to float it. It's intercepted by Brock Pounders. Oh, my goodness. And now we've got a flag down. Brock, one-handed intercept. Well, let's see what, the, let's see what the, the flag is. The flag came down after the interception. And I think if, if I saw if we saw it correctly, I should say, it should be offensive pass interference. That's the only way Brock got turned around. <laughs> I, mean, that, that, that's the, I mean, he had to have had control of his arm. If Brock, Brock's not going to go up with one hand to try and make that play. No, and, and I say that as I saw Coach Clark kind of waving that to, to decline it. Brett Hobbs in this defense, if they get this call, 
Springdale is going to get the football in fantastic field position. Now we've got conferences going on. The White Hat talking to all of his, uh, and I think he's saying turnover. There is no foul, so the interception will stand. Brock gets his third pick of the year and may save the day for the Bulldogs here. And just a reminder, Van Buren does have all three of their timeouts with just under a minute and a half to play in this ball game. So the ball's going to be placed at the 34. That was, I mean, you're not going to see a better interception than that. You just won't. Uh, that is incredible. Springdale going to go with the heavy set. Garrett's going to get the football. Garrett with 34 carries on the night. Van Buren does have all three timeouts remaining. Here comes Garrett straight ahead. He's going to be knocked down at the 35-yard line. And a quick timeout from Casey Dick. So let's, uh, let's talk about the playoffs here because there has been some news that has come out of Springdale tonight. Harbor is going to be forced to forfeit multiple games because of the use of an ineligible player. At last check, they were losing to Fayetteville. And at last check, Rogers was beating Rogers Heritage. If that holds, Rogers is in the playoffs and Harbor is out. Absolutely. As uh, it broke actually right before we came on, or actually right as we came on air, uh, Zach and I both got the updates that Harbor was forced to forfeit um, a handful of games there um, outside of the Rogers Heritage victory. Um, that will be their only conference win. Um, so they're having to forfeit the Pine Bluff win, the Van Buren win, and the Rogers win, which puts them uh, with only one conference win again. So And that conference win was over Rogers Heritage. They would have held the tiebreaker over Heritage had Heritage beaten in Rogers, or they had just gone and beaten Fayetteville. But neither of those things happened, or have happened. So it is now second down and 11. One minute, 20 seconds to go. Springdale needs a first down. A uh, first down pretty much salts this away. Play clock is at 15, so the, uh, the personnel running onto the field is not a big deal. Here comes Garrett straight ahead. Garrett is going to be stopped at the 30, we'll call it the 33, 32-yard line. Picks up about two on that play. It's going to bring up a third down and long. Casey Dick uses his second timeout and just to kind of recap that. Harbor's going to go ahead and forfeit three football games, three victories. More importantly, they're going to forfeit their two of their three yeah. conference wins, which will knock them out of the playoffs. And last I checked, as I said, Fayetteville is up 42-14. And Rogers leads Heritage 33 to seven. So if that so if that holds, if all the scores hold, Benton will be the one seed, West will be the two, Fayetteville the three, we're the four, Van Buren will be the five, and Rogers will be the six. And that's something that going into um, this week, you didn't really, you know, think Rogers had a chance to make the playoffs. And you know, I'll, I'll as, tell you this. as this broke, I, I talked today. to Tony Travis this morning. I had uh, about a 30-minute conversation with Coach Travis. And, I mean, he was asking me, and I'm like, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what to tell you. He's like, well, i got to go in and tell my guys when we, get to, when we get dressed tonight that we got a shot at this. And he was right, and I'm sure that Coach Lloyd told his troops the exact same thing. Absolutely, and that's something, you know, I, I had a guy that I worked with at a haunted house in Cave Springs that plays for Rogers, and he was excited for it to be over. Here's third down, Garrett. Garrett, down the sidelines, Garrett Vaughn, touch! Down Springdale! Garrett walks into the end zone untouched from about 34 yards out, and Springdale extends their lead with a minute 02 left, and I think that's going to seal the victory here for Springdale outside of any craziness that Van Buren may try. And I don't want this to sound weird. I love that kid. <laughs> Garrett Vaughn tonight, 37 carries. 207 yards and three touchdowns. He, he's the real MVP. <laughs> Barroso on to try the extra point. Kicks on the way, and it's good. We're going to take a quick break. Our score, Springdale 35 and Buren 24. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. Bulldog fans, keep up with your favorite team all year long with the official app of Springdale Bulldog Athletics. 
a free download in the App Store and Google Play, the Springdale Athletics app will keep you up to date with all things Bulldog. Schedule, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, as well as live broadcasts are just a touch away. The official app of the Springdale Bulldogs, proudly presented by McClarty Daniel. Download today for free in the App Store and Google Play. 102 to go in the ball game. Garrett Vaughn has just gone in for his third touchdown of the night. And the Springdale Bulldogs now lead by 11 with 102 to go. And I think we need to say this about the Van Buren Pointers. This is not the same Van Buren team that played the last couple of years and won four games over four years. Casey Dick has come in here and done a phenomenal job with this group. They are competitive, and they're going to get better. And, and as I, ta I talked to him on Monday, and, I mean, this is a young football team. He's got a lot of young guys on this team. Barroso's got it teed up. Short kick. We come down at the 20-yard line. This is Roark. And he's going to get across the 30-yard line. Nice tackle there. I believe that was Brindle, and we're going to get a late hit. Barranco with a late hit. That, I mean, that's just inexcusable. I mean, you got to <laughs> – I know you're excited, but you got to control your emotions. So give, a, give it to this Pointers team. All night long, they've fought tooth and nail with Springdale. So the ball is going to be placed at the 38-yard line, then a 15-yard penalty on top of that. It's going to set Van Buren up with great field position in 53 seconds and one timeout. So Van Buren will start with the ball inside Springdale territory at about the 47-yard line. Yeah, that's just, I mean, that's free yards. You can't, uh, you can't give Van Buren a team that has moved the football tonight, 374 yards of total offense. You just can't give them that kind of field position. Christian Morrow, the quarterback, he'll throw. Springdale going to rush for, fires underneath. This is Rivas. Rivas down to the 32-yard line. He'll pick up 15 yards. The clock will stop momentarily on the first down. So Van Buren going to hurry up offense here as they only have one timeout. Morrow, the quarterback. Three wide receivers set. Here's Morrow to throw. He's going to high, fire it high and long, and we're going to get a – we're going to say no. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we even heard the coaches yeah. next door say that was interference. But uh, that's going to go incomplete, and it's going to bring up second down. Brings up, like you said, second down here for the pointers. And Van Buren done a great job. They've been able to just kind of throw that ball up, and their big receivers have been able to go up and get it, as we saw earlier in the uh, – I believe in the first half towards the end as they threw it up for a touchdown. 36 seconds to go in the ball game. This is Morrow on the roll. He's chased. What a play by Nathan Burkett. Or check that. That's, That's Hunter, Hunter Cornelison. What a phenomenal play by Hunter. And this Springdale defense here in the second half after getting shredded the first couple of drives has really come back and played very, very well. Absolutely sets up a third and a commuter flight here for Van Buren. Third down in very, very long. Ten seconds to go in the ball game. Morrow to throw. Oh, look out. Oh, I thought Brock was headed the other direction. Pass is going to go incomplete. We've got five seconds to go in the ball game. So Springdale, let's not uh, overlook this. Springdale is going to win the football game 35-24. They are going to get their first home playoff game since 2005. Every year that Zach Clark has been here, there have been benchmarks. We, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. This year, it was beat one of the big guys and get a home playoff game. Check, check. Springdale Bulldogs are going to get their first home playoff game. We'll find out who, who that is next week. Rivas on the screen. Brindle is going to wind up making the tackle, and that is going to be the end of the football game. No, it's not. We've got a, pay, a face mask penalty. There is a flag down, and it is going to be a face mask against Springdale. So the ball looks, game is not over. It actually looks now as if they picked up that flag. Yeah, no, they're, they're oh. going to call the personal foul. It was inadvertent. I mean, he was being spun around. You know, one of our guys put his hands out to, to make the play, and he just caught the face mask. But it's a penalty nonetheless. Springdale is going to uh, they're going to get backed up. Van Buren be set up the 15-yard line there inside the Storm Orthodox red zone for the one untimed down. 
So this will be the last play of the ball game. 35-24, our score, Morrow with the quarterback. The Van Buren team is going to wind up playing either north side or south side next week, just across town for them. Maybe they want to deal with all the traffic we did. <laughs> Morrow to throw. He's going to fire towards the end zone, looking for Logan Humphreys. Ball's going to go in complete. Nice play by Brindle, and that is the end of the ball game. So our final score tonight, Springdale 35, Van Buren 24. We'll be right back. You're watching the Springdale Bulldogs on the Bulldog Sports Network. You can love where you live and play at an apartment community managed by Lindsay Management Company. Affordable apartments with awesome amenities, including clubhouses, fitness center, pools, tennis and basketball courts, and playgrounds at select locations. Many locations also include golf privileges, business centers, game rooms, tanning beds, whirlpools, saunas, and resort-style swimming pools. View rates, photos, and apply online at lindsaymanagement.com. If you absolutely, positively want the best heating and air company in Northwest Arkansas, then you need to call Absolute Heat and Air with over 73 years of combined experience. Their technicians are fully licensed and insured, background checked, and drug tested, so you can absolutely trust Absolute Heat and Air. They offer $49 service calls all year long, 24-7, 365, the absolute best value around. Call Absolute Heat and Air or visit us online. Our final score tonight, Springdale 35, Van Buren 24. So what that means... We said Springdale will be at home next week against an opponent to be determined. Uh, looks like, a, I think at last check, it looked like Southside was going to be coming up. At last check, but Southside did score and was going for the onside kick with a minute and a half left. Well, there you go. Game. So uh, we'll wait uh, probably for another 15, 20 minutes. We should know who the uh, the opponent will be. The Bulldogs, again, getting their first home playoff game for the first, since 2005, since Mustaine and his group rolled through. This is a, uh, this is a big deal. Uh, for these kids and, and we've talked about kind of those benchmarks you know victories and getting getting over the hump on some of this stuff Springdale's going to win the football game tonight Garrett Vaughn is certainly our player of the game 37 carries which is second all time in school history for 207 yards and three touchdowns and I forgot to do this earlier because Bartley Webb our fine offensive line coach asked me to do this he said to say hello to his wife and his and his youngin I'm sorry Mrs. Webb my bad got caught up in the game <laughs> uh, we will be on the air next week 6 30 Playoff football is back in Springdale. Carlos will be there. I'll be there. Seth will be there. Felipe and Yvette will be there, I'm assuming. All right, good. We'll have the whole BSN crew. The Bulldogs will celebrate tonight with a victory, and we will uh, talk to you next week. For Carlos and Seth and our entire BSN crew, we bid you a good night. The Dogs are winners tonight, 35-24. We are playoff bound. We'll talk to you next week.